Salam, this is Onia. In the Bible study the other day, we I was doing a screen share, but I messed it up. Basically, I'll show you. See right here. Um, let's see if I can. Oops, I'll refresh that. I want to show what happened, and then I'm going to fix that in this. So you'll see the recording is up, but the, see down here? That's what I was trying to share as my entire screen. So this should have been the entire screen, this, this box right here where the, where the circle is. Oh wait, hold on. Now I'm not, I'm not sharing the screen right now. So I'm being stupid. Okay. Um, there we go. Okay. Now the screen is being shared. All right. So, so you can see, you can see that Right this, right here, this box. This was the box that I was trying to uh, have as the entire screen. The entire screen. Unfortunately, I accidentally clicked Sean's box. I didn't realize it would do this. I clicked it near the beginning of this recording. And when you click a box, it makes it stay on that person the whole time unless you switch it to another box. So I should have switched it to my box. I did not do that, which was stupid of me. So basically through this whole thing, it's just on my friend Sean the whole time instead of on the diagram that I was drawing for everybody. So people will have a hard time following along. That's pretty upsetting to me. So, but, um, I'm I'm doing this video to correct that flaw. So here's the paint diagram that we did. Okay, these are the two the two different diagrams. So we have. Let's see here. Yeah. So we've got his diagram. When we messed it up the first time, we at first it was summer here. Uh, excuse me, not summer. It was south here, north here, west, east. Then we changed it up. We were putting the minus marks and the plus marks. But we were finding that how we were doing it did not correspond with what Enoch's description is in chapter 76. But we did find that my diagram corresponds exactly, it corresponds very well with the diagram. Uh, the, the diagram corresponds very well with Enoch's instructions about the wind portals in chapter 76. And it also corresponds uh, in chapters 34 or something like that to 36 as well, because it describes the sim similar thing in those chapters. So let's see. Um, yeah, it doesn't go for that far back. So yeah. Um, so basically, this is the diagram we did. the The brown, the brown is the the brown portals of each quarter are the, the the prosperous portals in each direction of of the horizon. The white sections are so so I'm going to read that right now from uh, hold on where is it okay. From Enoch, what he, what he said, 
It's 76. So here's how it reads. At the ends of the earth, I saw 12 portals open to all the quarters of the heaven. So there's 12 sections here, 12 portals, 12 areas, um, from which the winds go forth and blow over the earth. So he's giving us laws of how to tell wind. Um, and so he says three of them are open on the face of the heavens. That would be the east. These are three right here, the green ones. And then three in the west. So three in the west. Those are the red ones. And then three on the right of the heaven. This should be, so this was the face of the heaven. The right of the face of the heaven is the south, right here. Then, um, and the three, for, um, and three on the left. The left is right here at the top because it's to the left of the east. Okay, and so then he summarizes, Enoch summarizes and says, and the three first are those of the east. So these are the first three. And three are of the north. That's the blue. And there are three after those on the left of the south, right here. And three of the west, those are the red ones. So that's verses one or three. Then we've got this. Through four of these winds of blessing and prosperity. Sean was thinking that's talking about the first four seasons, first four months of the year. But that doesn't correspond with Enoch's descriptions. So basically what he describes here, the four, uh, in Enoch describes the four good portals or directions that the wind comes from and it brings good weather. And there's eight sections, eight parts of the 12 in all, which give bad, harsh weather. So we see verse 5, and the first wind from those portals called the east wind comes forth through the first portal, which is in the east, inclining towards the south. So the first wind is the east wind. The east wind obviously comes from the east. And so we see there's three portals in the east, the green ones. And it says the one inclining towards the south. So that's obviously this one because it's inclining towards the south. And in that one comes desolation, drought, heat, and destruction because it's closer to the south, closer to the equator. Um, then <clears throat> we've got through the second portal in the middle of the eastern section comes what is fitting. So this middle section here. Uh, and from there comes rain and fruitfulness and prosperity and dew. That's because during, uh, it basically, it, it has a good, it's coming directly from the east. So it's a straight on current. It's kind of like, um, it's like if you have it in a, in a farther off angle, if it's more in a diagonal angle, from east and partially the south, it's getting mixed. It's getting mixed up together. Um, remember that the scriptures speak of how he'd rather have us hot or cold, not lukewarm. Lukewarm is bad. And so we see the, the section that inclines towards the south is lukewarm in that sense. Um, and therefore it makes it not good. The uh, so I I guess I would I would call this warm though so this is warm and that's good warm warm is good but this is uh, this is luke lukewarm and this up here is luke cold if that's even a word 
I don't know if that is, but um, so now, so it says right here. Let's see. And through the third portal, which lies toward the north, come cold and drought. That's this one right here, cold and drought. So that's a mixture between warm and cold, which makes it bad because it's not purely warm. After these come forth the south winds through three portals. The south winds obviously come from the south, and they come through the three southern portals. The yellow ones. It says, through the first portal of them inclining to the east comes forth a hot wind. That's this one right here. Hot wind. Now this is a this is a hot wind, but it's also mixed with a warm current, and therefore it makes it again it makes it lukewarm, but or luke hot. Um. And on the same side right here, Luca, it makes it not good. See, I'm making up words as I speak. But so anyways, um, so I guess this would be Luke, Luke Cool, not Luke Cool. So this is Luke Cool. Okay, this is Luke Warm, this is Luke Hot, and this is Luke Hot. And this... Here is the positive, prosperous weather. So we see in verse 7, through the first portal of them inclining to the east comes forth a hot wind. That's this one, because it inclines towards the east. Through the middle portal next to it come forth fragrant smells and dew and rain and prosperity and health. That's the middle one. <clears throat> and then through the third portal lying to the west come forth dew and rain, locusts and desolation. That's this one right here. Then, um, after these, we go to verse 10. After these, there are the north winds. These are the blue ones up here. And we have, it says, the seventh portal in the east. Uh, come from it, come dew and rain, locusts and desolation. So what would that be? The seventh one? So one, two, three, four, five. See, I'm not sure why it says seventh. That seems like an error, as I said in the, in the other teaching. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or, let's see. But yeah, it sh I think it should be this one right here. This section right here, the blue. Oh, um, see, maybe it's just saying it's the it's the seventh portal that he's showing us. Okay, so the blue right here. Then, uh, so that that is the that's what comes from that is dew and rain, locusts and desolation from the middle portal come in a direct direction, health and rain and dew and prosperity. So that's a positive current of a cold wind, but that's a good wind because it's pure. But the winds right here, that's Luke, Luke cold and Luke cold. And so verse 12, oh no, verse 11 still, it says, and through the third portal in the west, well, inclines to the west, Come cloud and hoarfrost and snow and rain and dew and locusts. So that's a harsh, uh, harsh wind coming from that angle. Then, verse 12. And after these four are the west winds. Through the first portal adjoining the north, so these are the west winds. Um, to the first portal adjoining the north, this one, come forth dew and rain and prosperity and blessing. And through the last portal, which joins the south, 
okay, this is the middle portal that comes blessing. And from this, the one that adjoins the south, the last portal, comes drought and desolation and burning and destruction. So that's why the one up here, um, it has snow and frost, four frosts and cold. Um, do, do it says come forth dew and hoarfrost and cold and snow and frost and it says here comes the drought and desolation and burning and destruction so in the west you've got the cold harsh weather and you've got the cold the warm hot harsh weather but it's a mixture it's not a pure current and therefore makes it bad weather so that's all Enoch is trying to tell us. The He's not trying to give us uh, spring, summer, fall, and winter weather. He's not trying to do that. Uh, because you just can't make the diagram work with a spring, summer, fall, winter idea. It doesn't it doesn't match it doesn't match what Enoch's description is. There's too many contradictions. And that's why Enoch also gives us the the uh, descriptions of oops, uh, the places of the earth, the different areas of the earth. The first quarter is called the east. It's giving us the reason why the east is called the east. It's not giving us spring. It's giving us information about the, the naming of behind the east. It gives us naming behind the south. There's, there's word plays in the original Hebrew. You can find this in the Dead Sea Scrolls in the Aramaic. There's word plays. The most high will descend there. That's why it's called the south. The west quarter is named the diminished. And uh, the fourth quarter is called the north because it gives a reason. So there's the names are given those names for th those Hebrew words are given those words for a very special reason. Um, but this has nothing to do with the calendar. This is talking about the, the, the direction of the compass. He gives us the direction of the compass for the calendar. The direction of the compass for the geography, direction of the compass for wind, wind cycles and weather. He's basically saying you can use your compass or your horizon uh, area to mark for yourself the different nature observations, the calendar, the weather, the geography. So... Um, so in this diagram we did, you're in the center. Your dot, the dot in the center is you, the top of your head. This circle is your horizon, a flat surface of the horizon that you have, looking from above. And when you are looking, when you're looking due north exactly, your eye line is going to go straight up like this. When you're looking due south from where you're standing, it's your eye line will be like this. Same thing for due east, exactly. When you look with your eye line, that's where it's gonna. And then your eyesight eye line will, when you go in west, looking due west will go like that. If you're work, looking kind of like northeast, exactly in the middle or roughly middle, it's like this. You're looking that eye line of yours. From here where you are and your eyes are looking all the way to the horizon when the sun sets the sun is setting uh, right here so so you're seeing let's say you see the sun right here the sun is setting right here your eye line goes right to the end of the horizon and the sun sets behind it right here so that's basically the diagram to help you understand what I was talking about in the video because you couldn't see the screen share. And now I'm going to show you the the, uh, the passages we read. I'm not going to go through all the notes, but I'm going to just give you guys an opportunity to read for yourself here. Actually, I'll probably read it just so that it gives proper uh, timing. Uh, so, again, I know I, I marked, I told you, this mark right here means that it's not in the Greek, but it is in the Ethiopian. 
the parentheses right here means that the Arch Charles added that and just to give it clarity of meaning. Then if you see this type of bracket that is uh, means that it's in the Greek but not in the Ethiopian. Okay, so those are some of those marks. So I'll read it here. <clears throat> and from thence I went to another place of the earth, and he showed me a mountain range of fire which burnt day and night. And I went beyond it and saw seven magnificent mountains, all differing each from the other. And the stones were magnificent and beautiful and magnificent as a whole, of glorious appearance and fair exterior, three towards the east, one founded on the other, and three towards the south, one upon the other, and deep rough ravines, no one of which joined with any other. And the seventh mountain was in the midst of these, and it excelled them in height, resembling the seat of a throne, and fragrant trees encircled the throne. And amongst them was a tree such as I had never yet smelt. Neither was any amongst them, nor were others like it. It had a fragrance beyond all fragrance, and its leaves and blooms and wood wither not forever. And its fruit is beautiful, and its fruit resembles the dates of a palm. Then I said, how beautiful is this tree and fragrant, and its leaves are fair, and it and it blooms very delightful in appearance. Then Michael answered, one of the holy and honored angels who was with me and was their leader. And he said unto me, Enoch, why dost thou ask me regarding the fragrance of the tree, and why dost thou wish to learn the truth? Then I answered him, saying, I wish to know about everything, but especially about this tree. And he answered, saying, This high mountain which thou hast seen, whose summit is like the throne of God, is his throne where the Holy Great One, the Lord of glory, the eternal King, will sit when he shall come down to visit the earth with goodness. And as for this fragrant tree, no mortal is permitted to touch it till the great judgment, when he shall take vengeance on all and bring to its consummation forever. I'll stop there for a second. Here are the footnotes. Chapter 24. R.H. Charles gives his interpretations of passages. He tells us here uh, when it's like this. This mark right here means it's omitted. GG means the Greek text. De and E means Ethiopian. So the words de and are in Ethiopian, but they're omitted in the Greek. Beyond it, he's telling us that's a translation of this right here. That Greek, those Greek words. He's telling us the Ethiopian in the place of this says towards it. Here we have Ethiopian and beautiful. In the place of and beautiful, the Greek text says in beauty. Then he says, when it says in the Ethiopian three towards, the Greek does not have those words. When it says in the Ethiopian twice, one, Greek both omits the reference to one. The Greek says rough in one place, the uh, Ethiopian says crooked. And then we've got, uh, he, it says, these manuscripts, H, O, 1, and B, read, excelled them in height. The Greek text just says excelled in height. It doesn't say them. Then all other manuscripts of Ethiopian that R.H. Charles was using read their height. Excelled, it's either excelled them, excelled their height, I think. Um, resembling is the Greek. He says the Ethiopian is easily amended. So the Ethiopian doesn't, that means that amended means corrected, changed altered from what the actual text says. So he says the Ethiopian can easily be corrected, fixed, to agree with the Greek reading. Fragrant is what the Ethiopian says, the Greek says, of goodly appearance. And then we've got Ethiopian says, neither was any amongst them. The Greek says, and no one else had enjoyed them. It says right here, Oh, so that's a very different reading. Neither was any amongst them. No one else had enjoyed them. Right here, that's because um, my understanding was that Adam and Eve did have the access to the tree of life in those trees in, in the beginning. So I think they did enjoy them, but besides them, no one else enjoyed them. Then we've got the Ethiopian says, is beautiful and its fruit. The Greek omits through homitilion. I don't know how to say that word, but it's HMT in abbreviation. Then the Greek says how, the Ethiopian omits that. 
The Greek says fragrant, the Ethiopian says of goodly appearance. That's the same thing we have up here. Oh, so it switches it. Up here it says fragrant for Ethiopian and the Greek says of goodly appearance, but down here it switches it and the Greek says fragrant, the Ethiopian says of goodly appearance. Then the Greek it says it blooms, the Ethiopian apparently according to R.H. Charles is corrupt. Ethiopians very Greek omits that word very, it doesn't say very. Ethiopian says and honored, the Greek doesn't say those words and honored. Chapter 25, it says, ask, and in addition to that, the Greek text adds, and why didst thou marvel, which is not in the Ethiopian text. The second instance of why is from the Greek, it's omitted, it's not in the Ethiopian. The Greek says, wish to learn the truth. Ethiopian says, inquire accurately to learn. So it's mostly the same idea, but it's different. Uh, in verse 2, it says, then I, in manuscripts A through Q, and beta manuscripts of the Ethiopian, it adds the word Enoch to make it say, then I, Enoch. And the Greek does not mention Enoch. Then saying is in the Ethiopian, that word, the Greek does not say that. And then which that has seen, let's see, in the Ethiopian, the Greek text omits that. Then we've got, let's see, okay, now go to the, Going to the next page. Okay, so now I'll read more. <clears throat> it shall be given to the righteous and holy. Its fruit shall be for food to the elect. It shall be transplanted to the holy place, to the temple of the Lord, the eternal king. Then shall they rejoice with joy and be glad. And into the holy place shall they enter. And its fragrance shall be in their bones, and they shall live a long life on earth, such as thy fathers lived. And in their days no sorrow or plague or torment or calamity touched them. Then blessed I, the God of glory, the eternal King, who hath prepared such things for the righteous, and hath created them in promise to give to them. And I went from thence to the middle of the earth, I saw, and I saw a blessed place, in which there were trees with branches abiding and blooming of a dismembered tree. And there I saw a holy mountain, and underneath the mountain to the east there was a stream, and it flowed towards the south. And I saw towards the east another mountain higher than this, and between them a deep and narrow ravine. And it also ran a stream underneath the mountain, and to the west thereof there was another mountain, lower than the former, and of small elevation, and a ravine deep and dry between them. And another deep and dry ravine was at the extremities of the three mountains. And all the ravines were deep and narrow, of hard rock, and trees were not planted upon them. And I marveled at the rocks, and I marveled at the ravine, yea, I marveled very much. Then said I, For what object is this blessed land, which is entirely filled with trees, and this accursed valley between? Then Uriel, one of the holy angels who was with me, answered and said, Also, you see the bold right here? That means that R.H. Charles changed what the text actually says and altered it to make it say what he thinks it should say. The problem is, in people's translations which copy from R.H. Charles, most translations do, they don't include these footnotes and markers, so you don't have a clear way of knowing what he's doing or what the actual text says. You just are expected to blindly follow R.H. Charles' interpretation, which I don't agree with that idea. So once again, we've got these footnotes here. We've got, in the Greek and Ethiopian, it says then, excuse me, the Greek says then, the Ethiopian says this, the Greek says holy, the Ethiopian says humble. Then manuscript G says this reading. It's fruit, the dot, dot, dot means it's too long. He doesn't want to recopy the whole entire thing. So we just put the dot, dot, dot to tell you. It's the passage that he's talking about starts with its fruit and ends with to the elect. That passage right there is in the Greek manuscript, I mean, in the G manuscript, but it's in, the, in, other, in other manuscripts, it's correct. Um, then we have, he says he followed the Greek in verse 6 of chapter 25. He says Ethiopian differs in lines 2 and 3, where manuscripts G, Q, O, 1, and B read, for shall dot 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 bones instead of that it says and they shall draw the fragrance thereof into their bones 
then we have who, which is in the G text. The Ethiopian says because. I think E means just Ethiopian. G, I thought, means some other Ethiopian manuscript, but maybe that means Greek. I'm not sure, though. Created them is in the Greek. Created such things is in the Ethiopian. Then we have right here, blessed place, all manuscripts of Ethiopian except Q. Read, blessed planted place. Then, let's see. Flowed in the Ethiopian. Greek has a different word. Dusin instead of rusin. Rusin means flowed. Greek has another word that means something different, but it's spelled with one letter different in the Greek text. Ethiopian says between them. The, the G text says between it. Then underneath is from the Greek, and towards or alongside is what the Ethiopian says. Deep and dry is from the Greek. Underneath it is what the Ethiopian says in place of that. The words from then Ariel all the way to said, right here, that's not in the, in the Greek, Greek text. So then we go to the next page. This accursed valley is for those who are accursed forever. Here shall all the accursed be gathered together who utter with their lips against the Lord unseemly words and of his glory speak hard things. Here shall they be gathered together and here shall be their place of judgment. In the last days there shall be upon them the spectacle of righteous judgment in the presence of the righteous forever. Here shall the merciful bless the Lord of glory, the eternal king. In the days of judgment over the former, they shall bless him for the mercy and accordance with which he's assigned them. Then I blessed the Lord of glory and set forth his glory and lauded him gloriously. In a couple places in this in his translations, he prints two texts at the same time, side by side, to give you a comparison. This is what the Ethiopian says for verse 3. This is what the Greek says for verse 3. <clears throat> so continuing. And thence I went towards the east into the midst of the mountain range of the desert, and I saw a wilderness, and it was solitary, full of trees and plants. And water gushed forth from above, rushing like a copious water course, which flowed towards the northwest, and it caused clouds and dew to ascend on every side. And thence I went to another place in the desert and approached to the east of this mountain range. And there I saw aromatic trees exhaling, the fragrance of frankincense and myrrh, and the trees also were similar to the almond tree. And beyond these, I went afar to the east, and I saw another place, a valley of water. And therein there was a tree, the color of fragrant trees, such as the mastic. And on the sides of those valleys, I saw fragrant cinnamon. And beyond these, I proceeded to the east, and I saw other mountains. And amongst them were groves of trees, and there flowed forth from them nectar, which is named Sarara and Galbanum. And beyond these mountains, I saw another mountain to the east of the ends of the earth, whereon were aloe trees, and all the trees were full of stacked, being like, being like almond trees, and when one burnt it, it smelt sweeter than any fragrant odor. <clears throat> so, footnotes right here. He says, in the Greek text, it says, uh, uh, gamma and eta, or heta, I forget the name of it, but, um, that's, he says that's a transliteration of the Hebrew word gai, gimel, aleph, yod, which is found in Nehemiah and means valley. Uh, that's his interpretation. Then Ethiopian, the words the accursed, that's in the Greek, but Ethiopian omits that. The Greek says habitation, chapter 27, verse 1, habitation, judgment is what the Ethiopian says. Then he says, verses 2 to 3, the text differs uh, depending on if you follow the Greek or the Ethiopian. Then he, he changed, as I mentioned later, I mentioned later on in this teaching, which you'll see uh, if you listened last time, or I'm going to put this, I'm going to put this section, what I'm saying right now, I'm going to put this at the beginning of my video to correct it so that people can see when they begin the video. 
they can see this information before they watch the rest of it. So uh, it says the godly, that's R.H. Charles' correction. It doesn't actually say that in the text. See right here? It's bolded, which means that's alteration. No manuscript says that. The Greek does not say godly. He changed it to say godly because he thought, oh, that makes sense to say that. So the Greek says Asibaeus, he changed it to say Usibaeus, or Usibaeus, Usibaeus, E-U. Sounds very similar, so like Asibaeus or Asibaeus, changed to Usibaeus, sounds very similar. In R.H. Charles' mind, he's thinking, oh, well, maybe the scribe was hearing it, because sometimes when we write in English, we, type, we write or type a word that we're hearing in our head, but it's not the word we're, we're trying to say because the words are similar in sound or similar in meaning, and they, we mix them up accidentally. So Horace Charles thinks that's what happened, but I disagree with him. Uh, then he says, the E is corrupt, he claims. He says, perhaps we should correct the Ethiopian text and alter it to make it say those who have obtained mercy. I think the majority of the time we should not follow his suggestions for how to amend or fix the text. We should just stick with what the text actually says and not follow his um, his speculation. So here we've got the Greek says his glory, Ethiopian just says him, not his glory. It omits the word of glory. Then the Greek says lauded. Ethiopian says remembered, and the reason for the difference is in the Ethiopian text, the word for lauded is zemarku, the word for remembered is zekarku, very similar word. So it seems like the Ethiopian is incorrect here and should say lauded because of this similarity right here. It seems like it's a scribal alteration by the, by the Ethiopian scribes. Should say zemarku, lauded. But it says Zakarku remembered instead. <clears throat> then towards the east, those words are in the Ethiopian. They're omitted in the Greek, not found in the Greek. The other mountain range is not in the Greek. Uh, and plants, Ethiopian omits the word and. But guess what? It doesn't actually say and plants. Look, he, he corrected it. That's why it's bolded. So what it actually says in both the Greek and the Ethiopian text is seeds. So it actually says seeds. Or R.H. Charles claims that Greek and the Ethiopian mistranslated it as seeds, but I disagree with him. <clears throat> then the Greek text for verse 3 of chapter 28 says rushing. Ethiopian says a different word. Uh, then which flowed, that's added in the Ethiopian. Then he says, these words starting from caused and ending with to ascend is what the Greek text says. And the Ethiopian says the same thing if you alter the Ethiopian vowel points. Because just like in Hebrew, how they added vowel points later on, they did, this, they did the same thing for Ethiopian, Arabic, Syriac, Aramaic. So they have vowel markings in Ethiopian language. And if you change the vowel markings, it can fix it to make it say what the Greek says. Then we've got clouds. That's not what the text actually says. The text actually says water in both the Greek and Ethiopian. And so you'll notice that's why it's bolded. That's a false reading. It should say it caused water and due to ascend, not clouds. But here's why he changed it. He thought, uh, so you see it says uder, which is Greek for water. That's what Ethiopian and Greek read. And then... The Hebrew Aramaic would have been Mayim for Hebrew, Mayim for Aramaic. He says the original was Onanin, clouds. But again, I don't think there's any evidence for that, so he's just speculating there. Then we've got aromatic. He says that's um, what, what it should say, but the, the Ethiopian text says of judgment. And then the Greek says exhaling. The Ethiopian says something different. Um, and then almond tree is in the Greek. The Ethiopian omits that, but it does have another word which might correspond to the almond tree. And then we've got 
Um, so let's see, 30 verse 1, went. And beyond these, I went afar to the east. And the Ethiopian, it says mountains. So it sounds like it's saying, and beyond these, mountains to the east. Um, then afar in Greek, Ethiopian says not afar. That's a very different reading. So I went afar to the east. Ethiopian says I went not afar to the east. Well, that's a very different meaning. Another, the Greek adds the word great. Water, the Ethiopian adds, like that which fails not. The Greek says therein was a tree. Ethiopian says, instead of therein was a tree, it says, I saw a beautiful tree. The Greek says the color. Ethiopian says like. So, verse 2. Um, oh, it's on the next page. Let's see. Wait, where is that? The color. Oh, no, that's chapter 3. Um, hold on. Verse 2, the color. The color of fragrant trees, such as mastic. <clears throat> That's what the the Greek says. The Ethiopian just says like. So there was a tree like of fragrant trees, such as the mastic. And then 31 groves. The word groves is in the Greek. It's not in the Ethiopian. Nectar. Ethiopian puts before it nectar, as it were. Okay, then... Let me go to the next page, and I'm going to read this now. And after these fragrant odors, as I looked towards the north over the mountains, I saw seven mountains full of choice nard and fragrant trees and cinnamon and pepper. And thence I went over the summits of all these mountains far towards the east of the earth, and I passed above the Erythrean Sea and went far from it, and passed over the angel Zotiel. And I came to the Garden of Righteousness and saw beyond those trees many large trees growing there, and of goodly fragrance, large, very beautiful, and glorious, and the tree of wisdom whereof they eat and know great wisdom. That tree is in height like the fir, and its leaves are like the carob tree, and its fruit is like the clusters of the vine, very beautiful, and the fragrance of the tree penetrates afar. Then I said, how beautiful is the tree, and how attractive is its look. Then Raphael, the holy angel who was with me, answered me and said, this is the tree of wisdom, of which thy father old and thy aged mother who were before thee, had eaten, and they learnt wisdom, and their eyes were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they were driven out of the garden. So these are the footnotes right here. This is in the Greek. It's in, omitted in the Ethiopian. Uh, right, where on were aloe trees? It's omitted in the Greek. It's in the Ethiopian. East, R. Charles says the Ethiopian text is corrupt. Uh, of stacks. That's not what any manuscript says. He, uh, once again, he corrected the text. The Greek text says this. He says the Ethiopian was a translation of this Greek word. He thinks it should say stacks, but it has no evidence for that. Then burnt is this. Ethiopian reads differently. Um, then Okay, the Greek right here says D-O, like two. Smelt sweeter is the Greek. Ethiopian was, it says was better. R. Charles says these words, starting from and after and ending with odors, is omitted in the Greek because of the homutilian uh, problem of the scribes. That basically is when the scribes are copying and then they, their eyes look off the page and then they look back and their words come to the same exact word but in a different line, a different verse. So they miss a whole verse because their eye line skips back to the wrong line. So basically that's the idea here. <clears throat> Went, Ethiopian, he says is corrupt. The Greek, he says is corrupt instead of far from it. The angels in the Ethiopian, the Greek omits it. We've got, um, let's see, 
that tree all the way to its leaves are that's not an Ethiopian. He thinks it's because of that that error of the scribe taking taking his eyes off the page and putting them back at the wrong spot. Uh, we've got how in the Greek that's omitted in the Ethiopian. The tree in the Greek, Ethiopian says this tree. The Greek in manuscript Q uh, say and how. The rest of the Ethiopian manuscript says beautiful and. Oh, they, they, they add those words. Um, the, the Ethiopian says and said. The Greek text omits that. And then the Greek text breaks off after thy father. The rest is not preserved. So then, <clears throat> let me go to the next page. And from thence I went to the ends of the earth and saw their great beasts, and each differed from the other. And birds also differing in appearance and beauty and voice, the one differing from the other. And to the east of those beasts I saw the ends of the earth whereon the heaven rests, and the portals of the heaven open. And I saw how the stars of heaven come forth, and I counted the portals out of which they proceed, and wrote down all their outlets of each individual star by itself, according to their number and their names, their courses and their positions, and their times and their months, as Uriel, the holy angel who was with me, showed me. He showed all things to me and wrote them down for me, as their names he wrote for me, and their laws and their companies. And from thence I went towards the north to the ends of the north, and there I saw a great and glorious device at the ends of the whole earth. And here I saw three portals of heaven open in the heaven. And through each of them proceed north winds. When they blow, there is cold hail, frost, snow, dew, and rain. And out of one portal they blow for good. And when they blow through the other two portals, it is with violence and affliction on the earth. And they blow with violence. And from thence I went towards the west to the ends of the earth. And there saw there three portals of the heaven open, such as I had seen in the east, the same number of portals and the same number of outlets. And from thence I went to the south to the ends of the earth and saw there three open portals of the heaven, and thence there came dew, rain, and wind. And from thence I went to the east to the ends of the heaven and saw here the three eastern portals of heaven open and small portals above them. Through each of these small portals pass the stars of heaven and run their course to the west on the path which is shown to them. As often as I saw him, I blessed always the Lord of glory, and I continued to bless the Lord of glory, who has wrought great and glorious wonders to show the greatness of his work to the angels and to spirits and to men, that they might praise his work and all his creation, that they might see the work of his might and praise the great work of his hands and bless him forever. Let's see, footnotes here. Companies in verse 4 of chapter 33. That's found in Ethiopian text. Manuscript A, or manuscripts alpha. Manuscripts beta from the Ethiopian read functions instead of companies. Then we've got manuscripts A through M read device. Manuscript B, T2, and beta manuscripts read wonder. And um, let's see. Oh, yeah, and by the way, when you see these little crosses in the text, that's R.H. Right, Charles claiming that that's a corrupt reading. That's only his opinion, though. Um, in chapter 36, verse 1, after come, it says the south wind in manuscripts A through Q and in beta manuscripts. Manuscript U of the Ethiopian says from the south. And... Manuscripts G, Q, and U1 say two spirits and two men. Other manuscripts of the Ethiopian say to the spirits of men. And then most manuscripts say the work of his might. Manuscript Q says the might of his work. So that's the footnotes for this one. I'm not going to read through this one, but I am going to show you a couple of a couple readings because I did go through this also. I didn't read everything in it, but I skipped. I kind of skimmed through this in our teaching, so I'm going to skim through it now as well. So we've got on this page, um, let's see here. Okay. 
So you see it has the footnotes here, tells you the different manuscript readings. He says right here, G. So let's take a look at uh, G and H. He said, Charles considered Masse in the Ethiopian Northeast a mistake for lakel, for food. I don't agree with what R. S. Charles says. I follow the version here. So G and H, let's go to 25. G and H, that's right here. So this is what it says. This is for the righteous and the pious, and the elect will be presented with its fruit for life. He will plant it in the direction of the northeast, upon the holy place, in the direction of the house of the Lord. R.S. Charles alters it to make it say something very different. So that's just something to be aware of. Then, oh, uh, one second. Yeah? Sure. Um, then we've got, let's see here. Next, next place we have, we have, so it just gives a lot of footnotes in the, in the text here. Um, see right here, as I said earlier, seeds from it, or its seeds. Charles thinks that seeds from it is a corruption, suggests he should say plants, but he has no evidence for that. Um, then here's what we discussed. Sean was mentioning this later on. You'll see that where right here it says, and there I saw the tree of judgment, the smell of rubbish. Its tree looked like that of frankincense and myrrh. The other version that R. Charles alters it to say is something like, and there I saw aromatic trees. Um, what is it? It's aromatic trees exhaling the fragrance of fragrances and myrrh. And the trees also were similar to the almond tree. So um, you can see clearly there's something very strange in the difference. And we should be hesitant to follow what R. S. Charles alters the text to say. I don't think we should be eager to accept his alterations of the text because it's just his speculation most of the time. Um, so you see, he just gives a lot of in, in cool information. And then once again, 31F, so let's take a look at that. It says right here, and in it there were aloe trees and the whole forest was full of them like sturdy almond trees. Charles changes that to, to make it say, without really any valid evidence, he makes it say all the trees were full of stacked, being like almond trees. It does not say stacked in any manuscript. Okay, so he's changing things on whatever he wants it to make it say, and I disagree with that. And then again, um, H, what does it say in H? It says, um, and when one picks the fruit, it gives the most pleasant odor. That's what the Ethiopian says. He changes that to make it say, instead of it pleases above all odors, he makes it say, when one burnt it, it smelt sweeter than any fragrant odor. Well, so he, it, there's no basis for him changing these things. It's just his opinions. But the problem is you don't see that. In, when, when, in your translations, most of the translations are, are copying and pasting the text right here but not giving you the footnotes. Uh, all right, it's Charles copying, but not giving the footnotes. So that's a problem. Um, anything else? Oh, here's one. All manuscripts add large ones. So where's that? That's I. Their fragrance sweet, large ones. That's uh, the angel. Where's that? That's um, large right here. Yeah, large. Um, okay, and then
he says manuscript Charlesworth tells us for manuscript uh, manuscript a says for L the colors of the carob tree then G says leaves but he claims that other manuscripts of Ethiopian don't make sense to him what they say and then also here's an example of how the Ethiopian text can sometimes be an error one manuscript of Ethiopian manuscript a says burning instead of I said it should say clearly I said for oh where to and I said this tree is beautiful one manuscript of the Ethiopian says burning and burning you know that doesn't that's not valid so yeah that's the let's see 36 a where's that Thirty six. Let me see. Hold on. <clears throat> Gates of the heaven. From where the south wind. And what what does he say? He says um says can mean south or southwest charles suggests moisture instead of the word south that's his suggestion so um so you think you see things like that and then one more e what does e say the winds but other manuscripts say to the souls of men or to the souls and to people. So that's kind of the, the manuscript differences. Here's a Dead Sea Scrolls I'm going to show you right now. The the text that we read through. Um, let's see here. Sorry here. 30, uh, column 12 of 4Q204. Any words not in brackets? were found in the scrolls and fragments. The words in brackets are reconstructed and were not found. So we, we see this is in the Dead Sea Scroll fragment. This as well. This is, and these words, this. And then the next page. Also this. I'm just highlighting for you guys what is actually found so you can see whoops uh, there and this from here and this was found this and this too and this was found and you you can see you can see for the rest of this the same thing this we've got this all the way here this was found this, this, this right there. okay that's for this one then we go to 4q205 and for 4q205 we have uh let's see we have this this was found from chapter 25 uh, up to 27. Uh, this, this right here. We also have this. And we have this, these words, and this word was found. This was found. And this was here i was was found part of the maze at the mountain blessed part of this word expand okay that's for that one and then finally one more manuscript 4q206 
is here. This was found, then I went to, and part of this word was found, to the, and then a little bit of this word, and part of this word was found. Then gave off was found, it, part of that word, then in, part of trees was found. Their bark is ground, it, and then part of this word, and these was found. Towards the northeast of them, I was, that was found, and then part of shown, and other mountains was found. Choice, part of nard was found. Mastic and cardamom, part of pepper, and then from there I went on, was found. Then east of all those mountains, far from them to the east of the land, all, all that was found in the fragment. Then he also passed on and the Red Sea. And I passed very far from it. I crossed over the darkness far from it and passed on the paradise of justice. All that was found. And here in fragment four, I was shown fra. That was found. Differing was found. Then and was also found. Your mother of old, and they learned, was found that they were naked, part of the text that was found, the watchers, and he, the beginning of that next word is found, but the rest is missing. And then in accordance with, and times, and also, and I was shown gray works. So all that was found in the, in the Dead Sea Scroll manuscripts. So that's the, that's the teaching I wanted to share with you guys. Um, hopefully, now that you have the screen share, you can better follow along with the information in the video. I'm going to add this to the beginning of my video so that you will be able to have um, a screen share at the beginning. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, and hope I hope this helps you guys to follow along. Okay. Be here. Uh, for the first, okay, the six verses, the seven, thirteen, nineteen. We're going to read from twenty four to let's say to probably hmm, hold on. Okay, 24 to 27, I guess, what we'll do. Just let me know when you want me to start. All right. Um, and uh, when you want me to stop. Do you want me to stop after each chapter? No, I'll just read right through all the way from 24 to 27. And you can start, um, let's see. All right, let's have you start now. Okay. Are we going to be stopping at 27 or all the way through 27? Uh, through 27. Okay. Uh, chapter 24, Enoch. And from thence I went to another place of the earth, and he showed me a mountain range of fire which burnt day and night. And I went beyond it and saw seven magnificent, magnificent mountains, all different each from the other. And the stones thereof were magnificent and beautiful, magnificent as a whole, of glorious appearance and fair exterior. Three towards the east, one founded on the other, and three towards the south, one upon the other, and deep rough ravines, no one of which joined with any other. And the seventh mountain was in the midst of these, and excelled them in height resembling the seat of a throne, and fragrant trees encircled the throne. And amongst them was a tree such as I had never yet smelled. Neither was any amongst them, nor were others like it. It had a fragrance beyond all fragrance, and its leaves and blooms, and wood wither not forever. And its fruit is beautiful, and its fruit resembles the dates of a palm. Then I said, 
how beautiful is this tree and fragrant and it leaves and its leaves and fair and its blooms very delightful in appearance then answered Michael one of the holy and honored angels who was with me and was their leader chapter 25 wait hold on and, one second um, okay. uh, basically I want to make sure that my audio is, sounds okay how does it sound you guys Laura Sean do, do, does my audio sound okay or is it choppy okay it's fine how, how is my audio because I have an overhead ceiling fan going right now I can turn it off um, it sounds fine, but if you want, you can try to turn it off and see if that helps you. Okay, that's probably going to be better. The, re the reason I stopped you there is because the other week, I was talking in the beginning, and people said I was they had a hard time hearing me because of the... Uh, you can change which type of microphone you use, and some of the microphone options are not as good quality sound as as others. So um, I wanted to make sure. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, you you can start again. Okay, chapter twenty-five. And he said unto me, Enoch, why dost thou ask me regarding the fragrance of the tree? And why dost thou wish to learn the truth? Then I answered him, saying. I wish to know about everything, but especially about this tree. And he answered, saying, This high mountain which thou hast seen, whose summit is like the throne of God, is his throne, where the Holy Great One, the Lord of glory, the eternal King, will sit, when he shall come down to visit the earth with goodness. And as for this fragrant tree, no mortal is permitted to touch it, till the great judgment when he shall take vengeance on all and bring everything to his consummation forever. It shall then be given to the righteous and holy. Its fruit shall be for food to the elect. It shall be transplanted to the holy place, to the temple of the Lord, the eternal King. Then shall they rejoice with joy and be glad. And into the holy place shall they enter, and its fragrance shall be in their bones, and they shall live a long life on earth, such as thy fathers lived. And in their days shall no sorrow, sorrow or plague or torment or calamity touch them. Then blessed I, the God of glory, the eternal King, who hath prepared such things for the righteous, and hath created them and promised to give to them. Chapter 26. And I went from thence to the middle of the earth, and I saw a blessed place in which there were trees with branches abiding and blooming of a disembembered tree. And there I saw a holy mountain. And underneath the mountain to, to the east, there was a stream that flowed towards the south. And I saw towards the east another mountain higher than this, and between them a deep and narrow ravine. In it also ran a stream underneath the mountain, and to the west thereof there was another mountain, lower than the former and of small elevation, a ravine deep and dry between them, and another deep and dry ravine was at the extremities of the three mountains. And all the ravines were deep, grand, and narrow, being formed of hard rock, and trees were not planted upon them. And I marveled at the rocks, and I marveled at the ravine. Yea, I marveled very much. Chapter 27. Then said I, For what object is this blessed land for which it entirely filled with trees in this accursed valley between? Then Ariel, one of the holy angels, was with me, answered he, and said, This accursed valley is for those who are accursed forever. Here shall all the accursed be gathered together who utter their lips against the Lord, unseemly words, and of his glory speak hard things. Here shall they be gathered together, and shall be their place of judgment. In the last days there shall be upon them the spectacle of righteous judgment in the presence of the righteous forever. Here shall the merciful bless the Lord of glory, the eternal King. In the days of judgment, 
over the former, they shall bless him for the mercy in accordance with which he has assigned them a lot. Then I bless the Lord and the Lord of glory and set forth his glory and lauded him gloriously. Good. Uh, Laura, did you, were you able to hear Sean reading okay? Did, was his audio all right? Hopefully it was. Let's see. Yeah, okay, good. Yep. So uh, can you show me what book you're reading from? You said it was R.H. Charles, but can I see what the cover looks like? Uh, this is actually something I downloaded from the Internet, and I took it to a, a graphic shop and had it printed out and had it put into a, a bind. Okay, can so, you sh show me the page you were on? Okay. Uh, and can you show me the bottom of the page? Uh, one second. The bottom is the last of chapter 27. Okay, so yours does not have any footnotes? No. Okay, so now let us, uh, let us go through. Um, we're going to go through these chapters and discuss them, but I'm going to be showing you guys some interesting things. But before I do that, hold on just one second. I'm just going to mute my phone, or not my phone, my side, and just make sure everything's okay, and then I'll be right back. All right. Uh, before I start doing my my what I have to say, do any of you uh, hold on. do any of you have um, that's my phone alarm. I never turn that off. So dumb. Okay. It's like making the I'm repeating the same mistakes over and over again. I have that alarm set for around this time for some reason. I said it a while back and I never turned it off. Um, but anyways, so uh, what do you have any do you guys have any thoughts about the passages we read those chapters? Uh, I want you guys to have a chance to share your insights before I share mine. Uh, I do if I could share um, some thoughts about chapter 24. I actually um, saw a video of this where someone tried to decipher the first part of it where he's talking about the seven magnificent mountains, uh, beautiful stones and their appearance. Um, someone compared to this to be the actual planets in our galaxy that he saw because the appearance of them each described, I didn't see the appearance here in this chapter but there's another section that describes their resemblance and it sounds like he's looking at planets and he calls them uh, mountains. So I don't know if you've heard of that as well or seen that video. I haven't seen that video. I'm not familiar with that idea. I would be kind of skeptical of that idea because it seems like the context here is Enoch's being shown the things on this earth. That, that's what it reads like to me. Something interesting, though, just so you know, is um, it actually mentions the uh, seven other mountains. We, we, we read last week, and there were some other mountains mentioned. Uh, let, me, let me see here. Uh, I'm going to start sharing my screen now. Also, do you have any other insights, too? Uh, um, yeah, well, then it goes on to talk about the, the tree um, that the elect will be given. This sounds like the tree of life that was taken away from the, from Adam in the garden. Yep. And um, it sounds like that it will be in mankind's possession once again. It doesn't name it here as the tree of life. But that's what it sounds like it's talking about to me. Yeah. Now, here, I'll show you. Uh, you, you can see the, the screen share. 
Yes, I can. All right. Um, so we've got here the seven mountains, but this is all, all the way back in chapter 18. And uh, he's, he's got right here, verse 6 of chapter 18, where he says, I proceeded and saw a place which... He says, I saw at the end of the earth the firmament of the heaven above, and I proceeded and saw a place which burns day and night, where there are seven mountains of magnificent stones, three towards the east and three towards the south. Uh, and then and it says, beyond these mountains is a region the end of the great earth. Uh, you skip the part I was talking about. Um, at verse 7, under the subtopic, the seven mountains, it says, and as for those towards the east, one was of colored stone, and one was of pearl, and one was jacinth, and those toward the south of red stone. Um, all these are colors and appearances of, of planets. And it goes on to say um, alabaster, which is also an appearance, and, this, and there's another one of sapphire. And I saw one of flaming fire. Um, it's a pretty interesting uh, video that I saw about that. I'll, I'll see if I can send it to you. If yeah, that, that'll be interesting to see. Uh, yeah. Let me see if there's other passages too, because I think there's other passages that mention the mountains. Um, let me see here. Like right here. Um, in chapter 52, we've got the... We've got, uh, he's carried off in a whirlwind. They've borne me towards the west. There are mine eyes, so all the secret things of heaven that shall be. A mountain of iron, a mountain of copper, and a mountain of silver, and a mountain of gold, and a mountain of soft metal, and a mountain of lead. Um, and then it talks about how these mountains shall, in the presence of the elect one, be as wax before the fire, and like the water which streams down from above upon those mountains, and they shall become powerless before his feet. This corresponds with other passages in the Old Testament which speak of when the Messiah comes, the mountains will melt. Yes, um, probably Daniel 2 is what you're talking about there, where there will uh, be the, the kingdoms, the uh, breastplate of gold and I forgot what it is, but there's an image that Daniel saw, and each um, kingdom is made of a special metal. And then when in Daniel 2:44 it says that all those kingdoms will be crushed and and put away. I don't know if that correlates to that. Is that what you're talking about? Let me see here, uh, mountain. Oops. I always like to use a uh, blue letter Bible. Um, it's a, I find it a pretty good resource. Let's see, 24, okay, good, 24 verses. So we've got, um, yeah, so right here, Micah, for instance. And the mountains shall be molten under him, and the valleys shall be cleft as wax before the fire, as the waters poured down a steep place. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, Micah one four. I'm gonna I'm gonna check Bible Hub as well. I, that's also a good resource. Um. While I'm searching that, um, but so I guess from that from my reading, it reads like the mountains are on Earth that are going to burn, um, and it's possible that these mountains are all the same. Like okay, so here, chapter seventy-seven of the Book of Enoch, he says, and the he he's talking about the Earth. Uh, so he's being shown the things of the earth. Uh, he's shown the portals of the winds, for example. Um, then it says, and the first quarter is called the east because it is, it is the first, and the second the south because the most high will descend there. Yea, there in quite a special sense will he who is blessed forever descend. And the west quarter is named the diminished because there all the luminaries of the heaven wane and go down. 
And the fourth quarter, named the north, is divided into three parts. The first of them is for the dwelling of men, and the second contains seas of water, and the abysses and forests and rivers, and darkness and clouds. And the third part contains the garden of righteousness. I saw seven high mountains, higher than all the mountains which are on the earth. And thence come forth hoarfrost, and days, seasons, and years pass away. I saw seven rivers on the earth on the earth great larger than all the rivers one of them coming from the west pours into waters into the great sea and these two come from the north to the sea and pour their waters into the every three end sea in the east and the remaining four come forth on the side of the north to their own sea two of them to the every three end sea and two into the great sea and discharge themselves there and some say into the desert this might be a scribe inter uh, error, like not an error, a scribe edition, and some say, that doesn't make sense for Enoch to say that, uh, but it's possible it's a false translation. And it says, seven great islands I saw in the E, and excuse me, in the sea and in the mainland, two in the mainland and five in the great sea, but I guess it's possible when he says, and some say, maybe it's a prophecy and says, some will say, but it seems unlikely, it seems more likely to be a a scribal issue. Um, Before so, you, what were you going to say? Um, if you could scroll back up there to 77. Sure. Um, I just want to point something out. Maybe I caught this. I don't know how your interpretation of this would be, but um, when you look at our calendar on paper, it's divided into four, four, four quarters. And he's talking about here first quarter, second quarter, three quarter, and the fourth quarter. I think uh, he's talking about with each season here. The first quarter is from spring to the second quarter, um, and then the second quarter to the third, etc. So he's saying here, um, I don't know if you caught this, in the fourth quarter, let me catch this. Oh, and the second, the south, because the Most High will descend there. In quite a special sense, he who is blessed forever descends. I, I interpreted this as saying the time frame of the year when the Lord will come back. He says in the second, the Lord will descend there. Did you catch that? I see that, but it sounds to me like, uh, like let me see here, quarter... Um, Let's see here. Um, so basically, he shows at the first part, like, um, let's see here. Um, yeah, he's talking about the four holes and the seasons and all that. He's dividing the year up. In so in, se in 72, in 72, yeah. He divides the horizon. He divides the horizon and talks about how the sun rises in the east, sets in the west. So you see the east, all these mentions of east, uh, and also the mentions of west. Mm -hmm. And then um, the moon also in the east. And it talks about the, let's see, in the east. Um, Then we got here, the portals of the winds, okay? So basically, Enoch, what Enoch is trying to tell us is how to use the horizon, north, south, east, and west, the points of the earth, to figure out the things of the earth. He gave us the year, so the solar year. He gave us the lunar year. And now Enoch also is giving us how to do weather. He's telling us how to uh, predict weather. And what he tells us here is... He's basically trying to divide everything into the north, south, east, and west and give a full explanation of uh, things about that. And, and part of what he's saying here is the, the winds, he's, he's telling us uh, from, from the different places on earth, uh, from the direction the wind comes, that's going to tell you uh, the, the weather that's going to happen. So you see, he says, three of them are, it says... At the end of the earth, I saw twelve quarters open to all the quarters of the heaven, from which the winds go forth and blow over the, or 
the earth. Three of them are open to the on the face of the heavens, and three in the west, and three on the right of the heaven, and three on the left. And the three first are those of the east, and three are of the north, and three after those on the left of the south, and three of the west. Now, it talks about here, it says, through four of these come winds of blessing and prosperity, and from those eight come hurtful winds. When they are sent, they bring destruction on all the earth and on the water upon it, and on all who dwell thereon, and on everything which is in the water and on the land. So basically, I don't have this right now, but I drew a diagram, a circle, Mm -hmm. uh, once, and I did, um, I divided it into, into three, uh, three sections, uh, for each quarter. So you've got the circle here, and you've got, um, can you see, can you see my mouse? Yeah. You, so you've got the bottom section right here, the bottom quarter, which has three sections. Yeah. And then you've also got, um... Hold on one second. Let, let, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw this. Uh, okay. One second here. Let me quickly just open the paint. Um, okay. So now we've got this. Um, All right, so now we've got we've got a circle. What e what Enoch's telling us, okay? This is to be considered the horizon. So we're at the center. Um, well, let's see here. Approximate center. It's not exact. Um, Okay, and then what we're going to do also is it's going to be the four quarters. Of I did the same thing. I drew, I drew it in my book after I read it. That's good. Yeah, I, I've tried to draw it before. Now, basically what he's telling us, we've got, all right, this is, this is I'm doing this on the spot. Normally yeah. this, I, would, I would do this more accurately. But, um, uh, while you're drawing that, I'm just going to break down the chapter of, of sure. what I come up with. Chapter 76, um, verses 1 through 4, it seems like he's talking about the first three months of spring. And then uh, 4 through 6, it looks like he's talking about the porthole of summer. And then uh, seven through eight looks like midsummer, and then nine through uh, ten looks like fall, and then eleven onward it looks like winter. And so he, he just divided four. He he, designed, he divided the year into four sections, and then in, in chapter seventy-seven he goes on and he talks about those four quarters. Okay, and that's then, not how I read it. Um, let me, uh, so see right here, here's how I understand this. Um, so he's got the, he's got the four, he's got the four, uh, he's got the four sections. Hold on, let me just, the, the, the colors are completely, uh, whoops. The colors will be completely, uh, irrelevant, but it's just to mark clearly the distinction. Um, so basically, here's how I see this. Um, so, you see, uh, the south, the winds from the south, he says, what, what did he say? He said, um, there's 12 portals, okay? Here are the 12 portals. I just drew you the 12 portals. Um, these are the 12 portals. These are the portals of the horizon. We're told the portals... Uh, we, we are told in chapter 72 that the portals are the, the horizon places, like where the sun, uh, it, it talks about in its Means setting the western portals. Right. Uh, it's talking about the horizon and how uh, the sun rises 
in those special portals on the eastern side and then on the western side western side it sets uh, and I think it's the, the same portals here so in chapter 76 it sounds to me like so here, here he says there's 12 portals open to all the quarters of the heaven from which the winds go forth okay so he says through four of these come winds of blessing and prosperity that would so, be spring. Um, that's not how I read it. Here's how I'll, I'll show you. Because uh, And then he says, eight come hurtful winds. Now, uh, he says, the first wind from those portals called the east wind. So he's talking about an east wind. He's not talking about a spring wind. He's talking about the east wind. Uh, he says, comes forth through the first portal, which is in the east, inclining towards the south. From it come forth desolation, drought, heat, and destruction. And through the second portal in the middle comes what is fitting. And from it there come rain and fruitfulness and prosperity and dew. And through the third portal which lies towards the north come cold and drought. So you've got cold and drought. You've got um, heat. At the beginning of spring you've got the heat. And then you've got the... Uh, it wouldn't be... the If this was trying to follow what you're saying the begin the, the spring or the seasons of the year it, well I, I don't have, think it would start out with heat four, it would get hot later no you're right no I uh, I said verse four should start with spring uh, through four of these comes wind of uh, blessing and prosperity and from these eight come hurtful winds I think that would probably be winter and fall when the leaves are coming down um, I see this as Enoch giving us actual advice on how to read the winds rather than uh, talking about what winds are coming at what time of the year. It sounds to me like he's trying to tell us uh, like how the winds, uh, like what the wind is going to send to us. So uh, let, let me go through this with you to show you. Um, so you see in each case, for each what you believe is the seasons, what, but I believe it's it's just the quarters of the horizon that he's talking about. But so for the first quarter, there's three. The middle is bad. The the two outsiding parts are negative. The same thing for the next uh, through the through the next one. Um, let's see. So this is the first wind. Um, now look here, and after these come forth the south winds through three portals. Through the first portal of them inclining to the east comes forth a hot wind, and through the middle portal next to it there come forth fragrant smells and dew and rain and prosperity and health. And through the third portal lying to the west, so so there's the there was the second wind which had two on the outside bad and one in the middle good. And then again right here we have and through the third portal lying to the west come forth dew and rain, locusts and desolation, and after these the uh, the north winds from the seventh portal in the east come dew and rain, locust and desolation. And from the middle portal come in a direct direction health and rain and dew and prosperity. And through the third portal in the west come cloud and hoarfrost and snow and rain and dew and locust. And after these four are the west winds. Through the, through the first portal adjoining the north come forth dew and hoarfrost and cold and snow and frost and from the middle portal come forth dew and rain and prosperity and blessing and through the last portal which adjoins the south come forth drought and desolation and burning and destruction so what he's telling us is he where he is on earth uh, he's giving us instructions of how to tell the direction of winds because remember where Enoch was the south for him was the equator. South from so winds from the south would be winds from the hot part of the earth, the equator. Uh, winds from the north would be uh, winds from like the North Pole, which would be a cold, harsh. Um, but so so see my diagram right here. Uh, so here is my interpretation. So imagine you're standing right here. Okay. Uh, imagine. So let's have you as a white. Uh, white dot 
you're standing right there, that white dot. And that that's that's your head, the top of your head, okay? That's the top of your head. And you're looking, you're looking uh, north, straight north you're looking. That's like this. Your eyes are looking like this. Then your eyes looking straight east, there's there, straight west, and then straight south. That's your eyes, your direction of your eye line. Um, what Enoch tells us from my reading is that when the wind, when you're standing here and you're feeling the direction of the wind, if you feel the direction of the wind coming from this direction, uh, hold on, um, if you feel the the direction of the wind coming from here, from this direction, then that's going to be a good thing, blessing, prosperity. Same thing here. If if you, if it's if you feel the wind coming from here, from this direction of the horizon, it's a prosperous, a good, a good, uh, good weather that's coming. Same thing here. Good weather that's coming if it's coming from this part of the west, from where you are, and same for the south. Good, wonderful weather that's coming your way. But in these other sections, so you're standing, you're standing right here, and you see, oh, wind is coming from the north, but it's more like the north, uh, it's the northwestern section here, and so that's that's negative. That's not some not so good. It's uh, uncomfortable weather that's coming your way. Whoops, we got a little, we've got a little uh, bad weather there accidentally. Okay. Um, well, see, that's how I interpret it. I don't know what uh, you think about that. That that's one viewpoint of taking it. Like I said, I I was interpreting this as us living in the time frame of each uh, thirty-three degree slice. Because you know each one represents a month, so I, I, he speaks of uh, the, the twelve portholes at the beginning of uh, chapter 20, of seventy six, and I think those are speaking about our, our twelve um, months because we have twelve months, right? And each month and quarter has different seasons or winds, as he refers to them. That was my interpretation of it. What are tell tell me what these portals are at the beginning, uh, chapter seventy two. Um, what are these? The six portals in which the sun rises, and the six in which the sun sets. What portals are those? Are those the months or no? Th those are the horizon portals. Is that? Well, the horizon and the month corresponds together because the sun will travel. Um, uh, around in a 360 degree according to our perspective on Earth three different constellations uh, 12 of them and right, so, so oh yeah, keep going. we've got a day and a night um, in each um, in each one so uh, he I guess he's talking about um, on the horizon when the when the Sun is there and when the Sun is not I forgot exactly the specifics of your question, but that's... Okay, yeah. Uh, basically, from my reading here, he says here there's six portals in the east and six in the west. But now we go down here to 76, and he says, he says there's three to the east instead of six. There's three... There's a... Uh, Three portals of the east. Yeah, so you've got uh, three seasons on the east side of this. You've got three seasons on the north. You've got three on three in each direction. So each of those three is a quarter. So in chapter 77, when he's talking about a quarter, he's talking about three months. That was my interpretation. Okay, because now look, see, uh, it, it's still screen sharing, right? Yes. All right, so chapter 77. You see right here where it says, uh, it says, uh, so let, let, let's kind of try to walk through your interpretation here. Uh, okay. The first quarter is called the east because it is the first. You're saying it's called spring or something because it's the first season? 
Um, well, it says the first quarter. I guess that would be the first quarter in the year. So it's uh, it's, it's telling you a name. Uh, you also, it, it, this is in the Dead Sea Scrolls too. So right. let's look, um, West. Oh man. Let's see. Okay. Um, yeah, so right here. We, we've got the same stuff right here uh, in Enoch, the Dead Sea Scrolls. We've got, um, it says, basically anything anything that's in the brackets is not found. They are reconstructing it. What What is outside the brackets is what was found. Uh, so destruction, death, and, okay, then it says, it says the first. The south they call the south because the great one sojourns there, and in it sojourns something eternally. The great quarter they call the west quarter because the stars of the heaven go there. There they set and there they rise. All, All right. the stars, which it, th that is why they call it the west. Yeah, and so the north you know, they, the sun is within those stars is what direction we're in at that time period of the year. That's how we measure it. Okay. Um, right? Now, now it says, they, the north they call north because all the bodies of the heaven hide and gather in it and return to it and head towards the east of the heaven. And the orient they call orient because the bodies of heaven ascend from there. Also they call it the levant because they arise from there. And I saw three sections of the earth one for the sons of men to live in it, another for all the seas and the rivers, and another for the for the deserts, for the seven and for the paradise of justice. Talks about the seven mountains. So it, it corresponds with what we see here. Um, what corresponds? The, the uh, season? I'm saying the, the chapter here corresponds with the Dead Sea Scroll thing that I was just showing right here. Okay. Um, so... Okay, so here's my question. Assuming, uh, trying to follow your interpretation here, so you were saying the first quarter is spring. You're saying the second quarter is summer. Th the west quarter is fall. And then you're saying the fourth quarter is winter. But here's the thing, which seems to me to not be corresponding with your interpretation, is it says... The fourth quarter, named the north, is divided into three parts. So the, the, your, yours would be the fourth season, winter. Winter is divided into three parts. The first part of winter is for the dwelling of men. And the second part of winter contains seas of water and the abysses and forest and rivers and darkness and clouds. And the third part of winter contains the garden of righteousness. So you see what I'm saying right there? It seems like it's not... Uh, well, if it, this does get confusing uh, in chapter 77. What exactly he's talking about there, about uh, the abysses and forests and rivers and darkness and clouds. But from my interpretation really came from chapter 76. For, for example, verse 11 says, well, starting with verse 10, it says, And after um, these north winds from the seventh portal in the east, Come dew and rain, locust and desolation. And then in the middle four hole, come in direct direction health and rain and dew and prosperity. And through the third four hole, in the west come cloud and hoarfrost and snow and rain and dew and locust. To me, those sound like different seasons. Uh, I, the, the problem with that interpretation is... Uh, the basic idea here is uh, the farther north you go, it's going to be much colder, right? Like, um, so in in the north... Although, uh, remember, he lives pre-flood, and pre-flood, the, the climate did not have north poles that were ice, nor south poles that were ice. He lived in a completely different uh, greenhouse-type environment. 
Um, when the flood happened, our, our continents moved, plates shift, uh, the canopy of the atmosphere fell that was protecting the earth. Um, things haven't been the same since. And that's why at the North and South Poles, they're finding, you know, grass in, in the mouths of mammoths. They died. Uh, something happens instantaneously to the planet that caused a great climate shift. So there is keep... there is grass in um, Antarctica, but it's super cold there. Very cold, but there actually is life there. There's there is, uh, uh, and so my understanding, what you're saying, I would say is probably true to, to some extent. That like the ice, there was probably not too much ice there. Uh, but I wouldn't say we can say for certain that there was no ice at all because that would I think that would be speculation. Uh, there probably was some ice, um, and the from what I understand, uh, the north, the northern section, the farther north you go, it's going to get colder. Even in the pre-flood world, maybe it wouldn't get as cold as it does for us in our day. Uh, but my impression was that is it was still the same case back then, and the same thing when you're going south towards the equator. Uh, the closer you get to the equator, the, the more hotter climate it's going to be. And so I don't see this as necessary to correspond these things with the seasons of the year. Uh, I see these as Enoch sure giving us not. instruction. He, he's because. giving us, uh, trying to help us to read the winds, uh, I let's see here, like because if he was trying to say if he was trying to connect this to the calendar, I think there'd be a much easier way to say this. I think there'd be a much easier way to explain uh, what he's saying if, if he was trying to talk about the portals uh, as being the months. I don't know. I think there would be a a more clear way. Of saying it. Let's see here. So he's. Let's go to the beginning here. He says the book of the courses of the luminaries of the heaven, the relations of each. Um, show me the laws exactly as they are. How does with regard to all the years of the world? Okay. Then we've got. Uh, so we've we've got the the year of the sun, the year of the moon. Uh, then we've got synchronization. He tells us how to synchronize the two calendar two different years together uh, tells us of intercalation the four extra days you know and um, then what I see here is now he's going on to something that's not the calendar this again is my interpretation he goes on talking about okay so here's how you can know about uh, weather he's trying to give us advice for weather the problem is what your interpretation is is doesn't seem to be matching what we observe for the for weather for the winds, uh, like uh, during the mi like uh, during the middle of spring like basically there's three for each season according to your interpretation. Uh, there's three divisions, but uh, so let, let's see here. So I'm gonna walk you through this. Uh, going along with your interpretation. It's kind of a large coincidence because he's saying there's there's 12 portholes, there's four quarters, and each quarter is divided into three, and that's exactly what the calendar looks like. And then uh, if you read chapter 5 of verse 77, it even says um, uh, the word seasons comes forth for frost and days and seasons and years pass away. Where is this? Uh, verse 5 in chapter 77. Okay. Well, I don't see it in my... Oh, that's in, it's in verse 4. Okay. Um, so... So let me see here. Um, so I want to show you my understanding of what you're saying, okay? Okay. Uh, your, of your interpretation for chapter 76. So at the end of the earth I saw 
12 seasons, you're, you're, or not 12 seasons, 12 months, open to all the quarters of the heaven, seasons of the year you're interpreting, and then... Uh, Just let's break it down here. It says 12 portholes, and that's exactly what we look at. We look at 12 different uh, heavenly portholes, one for each month. We have a constellation for each month, whether the sun travels through, it rises from, and sets from. So... Yeah. Now, I mean. <clears throat> there, there's the the quarters which you you identify with the seasons, right? Right. Um, then, okay. So it says three of them are open on the face of the heavens. That that's the east it's talking about. So what does that mean? Three months, right? In your interpretation, three months are on the face of the heavens, or the e the spring, in your interpretation. Right. It's three in the west, so three months in summer. Then your understanding is three months. <clears throat> Wait, I'm, hold on. Um, no, three in the west. That's actually fall. Okay. Then three on the right, the south of the heaven. Um, that's that's summer. And then three on the left, the north. That is that is uh, winter. In your, then you say, okay, so the three first are those of the east. And three are of the north, that's winter. And three after those on the left of the south, that's summer. And three of the west, that is uh, fall. So it's, it's, first of all, it's kind of strange that he's going out of order there. Uh, but then we continue. He says, through four of these come winds of blessing and prosperity. As we're going to see later on, these four that he's talking about, this is a summary of the entire year or not the entire year, all the 12 portals. So he's saying four of those portal, 12 portals are good ones, where winds of blessing and prosperity come through. In your interpretation, that would be four months of the year. Right. And right here, from those that's eight, when have, eight That's months. when we truly have blessings uh, within the trees and the climate. That would be spring and the beginning of summer. So that, that lasts around four months. Uh, say that again, please. So he's saying four, four months of blessings, right? So that's about how long um, we have uh, when plants become to produce uh, at the beginning of spring um, on to the, the, last, the, well, the last of the first month of summer. So that would be four months of, of blessings. So you're, so you're thinking that the four months are, the four portals are, the second month of spring, the third month of spring, the first month of summer, and the second month of summer. No. The first month of spring, the second, third of spring, and the first of summer. Okay. And now I'll show you how that's in, that cannot be correct because uh, he tells us below what he says here. He tells us. Uh, so watch. And the first wind, this is spring in your interpretation. Okay, the first wind from those portals called the east wind. So the spring wind comes forth through the first portal, which is in the east, inclining towards the south. From it comes forth desolation, drought, heat, and destruction. That's clearly a hurtful wind, but well, he, he puts that in the east in the spring. So okay, I'm not saying I'm not saying that east is the spring. I I think that uh, this is kind of out of order here. Um, I'd have to break down this this chapter, but as far as what I understand is north and south. North would be um, in the spring area. South would be directly opposite of that. What you have green, east would be yellow. So that would be desolation, the winter, and then, or I'm sorry, east would be the blue. So that would be summer when the heat desolation comes. And then you've got west, which would be fall, right? Hold on one second. Let me switch this right now. Uh, let's see. Okay. This is this is going to be this is more color coded. So green is going to be spring. Okay. Yellow is summer. Red is fall. Blue is winter. Here is what Enoch is saying. 
he's saying, um, let me do a special, let's see, um, what color should it be? I don't know, brown or something. Um, he tells us the good, uh, he tells us the four good uh, parts, uh, the portals, the four good portals. When you read it clearly by the context, he's telling us this is a good portal, um, this is a good portal, then, all right, hold on, this, this is a good portal. This is a good portal. Um, and this is... Th this is what he's saying when you read through it. I believe if you, if you meditate on it and study, and study through it uh, pat, line by line, verse by verse, you'll see this is what he's saying. Uh, so he says, there's three portals from each direction. Three from the east, three from the south, three from the west, and three from the north. The middle portals of each direction are prosperous. Uh, the, that's what he says when you read through it. Uh, it's the so in order for this to be correct of your understanding, it would have to be that uh, it would have to be that. The first month of spring is bad. The second month of spring is prosperous. The third month of spring is bad. The first month of summer is bad. Then the second month of summer is prosperous. Third of summer is bad. Fall as well, bad, bad here. Winter, bad here. And winter, bad here. But that doesn't make sense. That doesn't happen. Uh, no, that doesn't make sense. But I think that's what you would have to interpret if you're if what you're saying is correct that these portals are months because I I'm pretty sure if you if you do more study on it uh, on your own time like like reading through and meditating on it I think you'll see that Enoch is saying what I just drew here that these portals are the good ones prosperous but the other ones are bad and harsh but I don't know. So you'll you'll have to because uh, and, and here's the thing: if he's talking about the calendar, if he's if he's talking about the calendar for this section, why is uh, he then talking about things that don't apply to the calendar? Like in other words, um, like he talks about the seven mountains and then the seven rivers, which have nothing to do with the, the the months of the year, it sounds like what he's telling us is he's giving us the geography. So, so after he gives us the calendar, which he divides amongst the portals of the east, he, he, so he does the calendar for the east, west, south, and north, and then he gives us the winds, how to use the winds in the east, north, south, west, and then he gives us also, the plate, the geography of the world, the east, north, south, and west. So I think Enoch is trying to give us some science here. I don't think he's just focusing this on exclusively on the calendar. Uh, then he talks about waxing and waning here uh, of the moon. He gives us different names of them, and then and then he gives a a, a prophecy later on, which isn't really a entirely about the calendar. Uh, it's partially about the calendar, but he's giving us more laws about uh, how in the latter time, like it says right here, look, look what it says right here. In the, This is still in the calendar section, but it says, um, in the days the sinners uh, of the sinners, the years shall be shortened, their seed shall be tardy, all the things on the earth shall alter, not appear in their time, the rain shall be held back, so he's giving us prophecy, connecting it with the calendar. Uh, he says the moon will alter her order. Uh, the chiefs of the stars will be altered. And then he gives right here, 
Let's see. And then uh, like look, look what it says right here. And those seven holy ones brought me and placed me on the earth before the door of my house and said to me, Declare everything to thy son Methuselah and show to all thy children that no flesh is righteous in the sight of the Lord, for he is their creator. One year we will leave with thee, leave thee with thy son till thou givest thy last commands that thou mayest teach thy children and record it for them and testify to all thy children. And in the second year they shall take thee from their midst. Um... So, like, all this right here, this prophecy, is not so much about the calendar, but it's just tying it all together. He's giving us a laws of everything. So, what did we see in, in the chapters? We are, hopefully we'll have time to read it. But it's, it's showing, uh, he, he's being shown here, he's being shown here geography. First, he's being shown the, the places of punishment, seven mountains, the abyss, uh, he was shown the treasuries of the winds. Um, he's shown, so he's shown the places of punishment. Visits to Shoal. He goes to Shoal. Uh, he sees the mountains, Garden of Eden. Later on, the, with the Tree of Life, he sees, as you said. Um, then he is. Oh yeah, here's the Garden of Eden. Um, and then we see right here. He's shown the stars, but first he's shown the beasts. He's shown beasts. He shows the differences of the beasts, and then he's shown um, the portals of the heaven where they open, how the stars of heaven come forth, um, and then and it says after he's shown this, he went towards the north to the ends of the earth, he saw a great and glorious device at the ends of the whole earth. And now look, and here I saw three portals of heaven open in the heaven. Through each of them proceed north winds. When they blow, there is cold hail, frost, snow, dew, and rain. And out of one portal they blow for good. But when they blow through the other two portals, it is with violence and affliction on the earth. And they blow with violence. Uh, and from thence I went towards the west to the ends of the earth and saw there three portals of the heaven open such as I had seen in the east, the same number of portals and the same number of outlets. So he, this, this corresponds, what he's being shown here in, in 33 to 36 corresponds with the chapters later on. Um, it says right here, from thence I went to the south, to the ends of the earth. So he's being shown uh, on, on the earth, and he saw there are three open portals of the heaven. And thence there come dew, rain, and wind. So in the three open portals of the south come dew, rain, and wind. Um, and yeah. from I thence I went to the east. Spring. Say it again. I take that as spring. You take this as spring right here. Yeah, the south. The south. When the sun is in the south of the heavens, that is my understanding that it is... Uh, springtime. Okay. Um, so here's what I suggest, because it seems like we might not come to agreement on this. Uh, yeah. It, I, I want you to. I want you to read this on your own, and we're actually going to do another. This is not uh, chap. The chapters are here. Seventy six and seventy seven are not uh, from what we're doing uh, today. Anyway, we're kind mm -hmm. of. It is kind of related, actually, though. But we're going to be doing these chapters again. Not next week, probably, but maybe the, the week after or something. Uh, what I advise is try reading these again and try to, especially what he's saying here, because, as I said, with the, with the paint diagram that I showed you, I'm pretty sure if you read through it, you're going to see that what he's saying is, there's um, there's the three portals of the east, which you would say three portals of the east are the three months of spring, and then there's the three portals of the south, which you would say are the three portals of summer, and then no, this what would not, would not represent the south would represent the spring. 
Um, I, I'm it's pretty sure the, right there, which is spring and which is the south, and line it all up because the way it is is just confusing. Right here, uh, it says. So really, the south. It, if you twisted this in, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I'm just looking at my diagram that I had designed. Um, we put, I put my numbers in a different sequence that you put yours. That's where the problem came in. Okay, how how will we fix? <clears throat> okay. Wait, do you do you have it to show us? Um, why don't I draw it up and I'll I'll send it to you and I'll put some thought into it and and make okay. it. Okay. And then you take a look at it. Uh, you mean right now or some other time? No, it'll take me a, some time. But what I did was I put uh, uh, each each quarter was, was divided into three, but they weren't in sequence like you have going here. Um, the one would start, like for instance, on fall. One would be in the place of five, and then two would be four, and then three would be. I can't see the image right now. What? I'm looking at Rob. <laughs> there you go. So, um, but anyway, that that's where the confusion came in. So I'm I'm gonna try to put together my idea of, of interpretation of what I think this is, and then we can maybe continue the discussion. But I don't want to continue dragging this out because it's been like a year since I've looked over this chapter. Okay. Uh, yeah. So send me that. Okay. And then we, we'll, as I said, we're going to be doing this again, uh, this this topic again, um, in like a couple of weeks. So okay. tr try, and then if you want, you can join there, and we can go through it again. But so let me just finish this up, going through my interpretation, and then we'll go back and try to do the rest of this. Um, so through it says for first seven. After these come forth the south winds through three portals. South winds through three portals. Uh, through the first portal of them inclining to the east comes forth a hot wind. So the uh, that would be right here. That's a hot and negative. Through the middle portal of the south winds, there come fragrant smells and dew and rain and prosperity and health. That's why I got the plus right there. Through the third portal of the south, lying to the west, come forth dew and rain, locusts and desolation. So we've got another bad one. Towards the west in the south, which is bad. Then, uh, let's see, after these, the north winds. So now I'm going to the north. Um, and from the from the seventh portal in the east uh, come dew and rain locusts and desolation so let's see one uh, one two three four five six seven thinking so I think it's this right here the seventh portal uh, in the east. Then, from the middle portal of the north, comes uh, comes a, a direct direction, health and rain and dew and prosperity. Through the third portal. Whoops. Okay. Uh, it, so it should be this one. Now, third portal in the west, uh, come cloud and hoarfrost and snow and rain and dew and locusts. Okay, and after these, four, um, that sounds inaccurate, after these four, so R.H. Charles sometimes changes it, so it should probably say after these three or something, are the west winds through the first portal adjoining the north come forth dew and hoarfrost and cold and snow and frost. So that's right here. Then from the middle portal of the west come dew and rain and prosperity and blessing. And through the last portal, which adjoins the south, come forth drought and desolation, burning and destruction. So you see in each of these, you've got this one. It's cold up here 
in the West, but also heat um, in the West because it's cl closer to the, to the South. Same thing for here and here. Um, so that's what we see. I, I believe what Enoch describes matches very well this diagram that I have. And I think you can't really match it with the seasons. But So try to draw it up and get back to me on it. Okay. Uh, and for anyone who's watching this on the recording, hopefully you uh, enjoyed the tangent. But if not, my apologies. <laughs> But I, I, I thought it was good. I, I think it's a good uh, thing we went through. So let me see here. All right. Now I'm going to show you guys. I have the documents here loaded. And uh, so here, can, can you guys see this OK? <clears throat> this is. Um, Can you see the, the text all right? Uh-uh. No? No, it's just your diagram. Oh, okay. Hold on. Um, I'll show you. Screen share it. Uh... All right. Now can you see it? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is from one version of Enoch. You can see there's a whole bunch of other stuff here that's not in most people's version. This is R.H. Charles text, which is from most most translations of Enoch. Just copy and paste his version, and they remove his footnotes. But he explained very clearly what certain differences were. So you see he has little markings right here. That means that's not in the Greek, but it is in the Ethiopian when he has these type of brackets. Parentheses means he added it, and that's not part of the text. And this type of bracket means it's in the Greek, it's not in the Ethiopian. And he also gives footnotes here. So, as we discussed before, the seven mountains were, are discussed in other places in the Book of Enoch earlier in like chapter 18 or something and then also in chapter 76 talks about the seven mountains so the, it seems like these are the same seven mountains that's going on about um, let's see the seventh mountain was in the middle of all these it, it excelled them in height resembling the seat of a throne and fragrant trees encircled the throne and amongst them was a tree such as I had never yet smelt. Neither was any amongst them, nor were others like it. Uh, so what, what, what it's, it says its, uh, its fruit was like a, the date of a palm. And he asks Michael who, what, what, what the uh, tree was. Why is that tree like that? And um, then he tells him, he says, this high mountain, which thou hast seen, whose summit is like the throne of God, is his throne, where the Holy Great One, the Lord of glory, the eternal King, will sit when he shall come down to visit the earth with goodness. Remember, the, the scriptures speak about the Messiah coming and going down on the mountain uh, when he visits us. I think it's talking about the same thing. And then it says, And as for this fragrant tree... No mortal is permitted to touch it till the great judgment, when he shall take vengeance on all and bring to its consummation forever. It shall be given to the righteous and holy. Its fruit shall be for food to the elect. It shall be transplanted to the holy place, to the temple of the Lord, the eternal King. Then shall they rejoice with joy and be glad. And into the holy place shall they enter, and its fragrance shall be in their bones, and they shall live along life on earth, such as thy fathers lived, and in their days shall no sorrow or plague or torment or calamity touch them. So it's clearly talking about the, the tree of life, as Sean said earlier. And it's talking about how the tree is going to be removed from the garden and put into the temple. 
area, the holy place in Jerusalem. That's how I read it. Now, these, here's some footnotes right here. See this? He says, and from thence all the way to the of the earth. Remember, as I told you, uh, these notes, these brackets, mean that's what it means. But he also sometimes tells you in the footnotes just to, have, to give you a double reminder. So he says, all that is not in the Greek. Day and is not in the Greek. Beyond it is his translation of the Greek. Uh, the Ethiopian says towards it. So what's that? Uh, I went beyond it. Uh, Ethiopian says I went towards it. He went towards the mountain range. Uh, here it says showed me a mountain range of fire which burnt day and night in the in the Ethiopian. Apparently the Greek just says uh, in, in the night. It doesn't say day and. Here we've got and beautiful. In the Greek it says in beauty. That's pretty similar. And then we've got, look right here, we see three towards is not in the Greek text, and one, both times it says one is also not in the Greek text. So where we've got right here, three towards the east, one founded on the other, and three towards the south, uh, one upon the other. So it, it changes it to basically make it say, so he saw seven magnificent mountains, uh, the east founded on the other, and three towards the south. It makes it sound like perhaps there's like ten mountains or something. I think the Ethiopian is the correct reading here. Um, let's see. Um, very. Hold on. Very. Let's see, that's verse 5. Okay, it's blooms very delightful. Not a major difference there. Then I, Enoch, okay, verse 2. Um, it says, then I answered him. That's what many manuscripts say, but some, a good number of manuscripts say, then I, Enoch. Is that, see right here? Um, Greek, the Greek text, though, does not say Enoch. Um, so let's see. And then R.H. Charles, in his commentary, he says, It is not Sinai, but the throne of God, which he descends to bless the earth. So it's probably some other mountain, not Mount Sinai. Um, these terms, Holy Great One, Lord of Glory, Eternal King, we, we see that in the Dead Sea Scrolls sometimes. Uh, now let's see. <clears throat> what was the Dead Sea Scrolls written in? What language? Uh, in Hebrew and Aramaic. Um, uh, for for the Enoch fragments, it was in um, in the Enoch ones are Aramaic. Now let's see. Twenty six and twenty seven. Um, he says E is very corrupt. He didn't translate the, the, the e Ethiopian. He followed the Greek text. Then, to the holy place, R.H. Charles agrees with my interpretation, Jerusalem when purified. Uh, and then he says in verse 6, he followed the Greek. He says the Ethiopian differs in lines 2 and 3, where these manuscripts here read, shall and then bones at the end of it, um, and they shall draw the fragrance thereof into their bones. He says, if we accept this, we might read, then shall they rejoice with joy and be glad in the holy place. So let me see here. Verse 6, that's right here. And its fragrance shall be in their bones. Um... It says, and they shall draw the fragrance thereof into their bones. That's the Ethiopian. Um, let's see. Who? Ver All right, so verse 7. Then blessed I, the God of glory, the eternal king, who hath prepared. We see in, that's from the Greek, in the Ethiopian it just says because. And then created them, uh, in the Greek, 
in the Ethiopian it says created such things. And then, okay, uh, 26, the middle of the earth. It's, in other scriptures it talks about Jerusalem as the middle of the earth. The, the, holy, the holy place is the middle of the earth. Right. Uh, Jubilees calls it the navel of the earth, Mount Sinai. Right. He says, I saw a blessed place in which there were trees with branches abiding and blooming of a dismembered tree. It's a holy mountain, and underneath the mountain to the east there was a stream, and it flowed towards the south. Um... Between them, let's see. He's talking about the three mountains. Okay, and then in verse 27, it talks about what's the purpose of the valley. Uh, an Uriel, or Serial, as the Dead Sea Schools show us. Um, yeah, and right here we, we, we see... Okay, the Greek says holy, um, and the Ethiopian says humble. That was, uh, wait, hold on, verse 5. It shall be given to the righteous and humble, uh, in the Ethiopian, in the Greek says holy. And, um, yeah, and, and this is exactly what Sean just said, Jubilees he calls the earth the navel, Jerusalem. Uh, and then, for, according to R. H. Charles, he says Enoch chapter ninety, verse twenty-six, tells us that Kahina, the place of punishment, is in the midst of the earth, or in the middle of the earth. Um, this uh, I just found a tidbit here um, when it speaks about the valley that you you just looked over. Yeah. Uh, it also in the footnote refers to it as Kedron. And uh, if you search that, what is Kedron, it says that um, it's the valley narrow between Mount, it even says the, the location of it, it says it's between Mount of Olives and Mount Moriah. And yeah. there's a prophecy that says that the Mount of Olives will split open yeah. when Messiah comes. I'm wondering if this is the valley that it's talking about. Yeah, I think it is. Um, let's see. This is a future prophecy of a, of a valley that doesn't exist yet. Uh, sounds like uh, the unrighteous will be hurled into. Well, it seems to me that uh, well, perhaps it's a valley that doesn't exist yet. But I, from what I've seen in, in According to Enoch and Jubilees, it seems like a lot of the a lot of the geography of the pre-flood world is the same as after the flood. Some of it probably changed a little bit, but uh, it seems like the landmarks are still the same from before the flood and after. So the valley might actually have been there. Uh, it might have been there even before the flood. Well, there, there's always been the Valley of Gehenna where they threw the trash and even uh, dead bodies of people who didn't have a family for a decent burial, such as criminals. I mean, that was basically the lake of fire that stayed burning uh, day, day and night. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, look, here's something interesting. Then Uriel all the way to this is in the Ethiopian, but it's not in the Greek. So right here... Then Uriel, one of the holy angels who was with me, answered and said, that's not, that's not in the Greek. So we can see that the Greek is not always reliable sometimes. Now, Isn't Yahweh going to split the mountain when he comes back, make a valley for... Right, that's in, isn't that in Zechariah? Right. In yeah, I think, too, I think. Somewhere. That's exactly, I think that's exactly what it's talking about. Yeah, um, they escape. Yes. And interestingly, is um, Mount uh, of Olives is actually an, a very ancient and old grave site. And it talks about in, in John, I think it's chapter 5, 24 and 25, about the dead coming out of their tombs. The righteous will be judged to life, and the unrighteous will so be out of But... Um, that would basically be the uh, second judgment. 
Yeah. For some. Yeah, good observation. Um, let's see. Then we've got here, R.H. Charles sometimes prints two different versions of the same text. He prints the Ethiopian here and the Greek on this side. So you can look at the differences here. Um, here shall be their place of judgment. It says right here, here shall be, in the, in the Greek it says, their place of their habitation. Then, in the last days there shall be upon them the spectacle of righteous judgment. Days of the true judgment in the presence of the righteous forever. In the presence of the righteous forever, here mm -hmm. shall the merciful bless the Lord of glory. Here shall the, it says godly, but look, there's a black right there. The black means that he changed it. Um... And that in the days of judgment over the former, they shall bless him for the mercy in accordance with which he has assigned them. Then I blessed the Lord of glory and set forth his glory and lauded him gloriously. So let's see. Valley. Greek has earth. I think that's earth. Uh, wait. No. It has that, but R.H. Charles says that's actually a transliteration of the Hebrew. At, like as in Nehemiah 11. So perhaps he's right there. Um, then the accursed, that's not in the Ethiopian. That's uh, verse 1. So right here. Here shall all the accursed be gathered. Um, so in the Ethiopian it just says, a cursed valley is for those who are accursed forever. Here shall all they be gathered together who utter their lips against the Lord. So it's not too much of a difference for removing some of these words. Um, the godly, like, see right here? He says he amended it. Um, what does uh, what does your guy's version say for uh, the god uh, for um, verse three? Does it does it say at the at the final the final part of it? Here yeah. shall the godly or here shall the merciful? What does yours say? Uh, what chapter are you talking about? Verse 3 at the final clause of what? chapter 27. Okay. Um, it says, It shall be their place of judgment in the last days. There shall be upon them a spectacle of righteous judgment in the presence of the righteous forever. Here shall the merciful bless the Lord glory. The Lord of glory, the eternal king. Okay, so I follow, that one follows the Ethiopian. Okay, good. Uh, sometimes sometimes what you're going to see, the bolded, again, the bolded is altered, not what the text actually says. And sometimes that's in the regular text you guys have, but you don't have a footnote telling you that. And I believe sometimes when he changed that, that that's wrong, that what he changed. Uh, you can see there's bold right here. And plants, there's bold right here. Aram aromatic. So he, he, he changes things a lot from what the text actually says to what he think it should have said, which right. is questionable. It's questionable. Yeah. Sometimes it can be accurate, but, you know, it's questionable. You look at the context so, of the verse. He says that uh, they will bless the Lord. Uh, well, if it's the unrighteous are going to be thrown into the, um, the tavern, <laughs> what is it? Basically, Gehenna, and the only people who are going to be left to bless him are the godly. Right. Uh, it says, in the days of judgment over the former. The former is referring to, it mentions the, the, the righteous um, right here. In the presence of the righteous forever. In the days of judgment over the former. In the days of judgment over the former. In the days of judgment over the wicked. They, the righteous, shall bless him for the mercy in accordance with which he has assigned them. Um, that's how I read it. And then, yeah, so verse 5, let's see. It says, and set forth his glory. And set forth his glory and lauded him gloriously. Uh, apparently in the Ethiopian it says, and I... Then I blessed the Lord of glory and set forth, uh, set forth him, set forth him, and remembered him gloriously. See right here? 
the, the Greek the Greek says lauded, lauded him gloriously. The Ethiopian says remembered. Zakarku, uh, which is a cognate of the Hebrew word zikar, which is remember. Uh, Ethiopian is a Semitic language, and it sometimes it has a lot of words which are the same basic words as Hebrew. So zikarku is the Ethiopian for remembered. Uh, all right, Charles says zemarku, in Ethiopian word zemarku, is lauded. So it's a slight difference of spelling of the, which word is. Is it zikarku, remembered, or zemarku, lauded, as the Greek says? Um, then, okay, so that's those. That's that, and then let me see. This is another version. Just checking the. Okay, he, this version also mentions the Dead Sea Scroll stuff. Um, let's see. I'm just checking the footnotes of here. Of anything special. Um. Yeah, let's see. G. Twenty-five. G. So, and the elect will be presented with its fruit for life. That's what the Ethiopic text says. This is for the righteous and the pious, and the elect will be presented with its fruit for life. Um, and then Charles, he says, it says Charles considers Masse, uh, northeast, a mistake for Lakel for food. Where is that right here? H. He would plan it in the direction of the northeast. Uh, what does it have? That's that's um, verse five of twenty-five. Let's see. Yeah, he he put it as food. Uh, it's food to be as food for the elect. Whereas, according to this other version right here, it says that Charles considers that a mistake, which we should not follow what Charles says there, I don't think. We should follow what the actual text says. He will plant it in the direction of the northeast upon the holy place. Um, and then... Okay, B and C... Add sorrow, pain, torment, and plague shall not touch them. Is that in the other version? Let's see. L. Such as your fathers lived in their days. Yep. It's uh, that's the same right here. So that's that's in manuscripts of B and C. Not in all Ethiopian manuscripts. And then let's see here. Um. Kay says that she's on, but she can't um, type anything to send any comment comments. What, what, say it again. Kay Morrison is online, um, and she said that she cannot see a place to type in commentary. Okay, basically, uh, see this right here. Uh, it says, uh, we, we have the sidebar right here, which is the people who are on with us. Then we have people who are not on with us, but who are viewing it. And it's, I think that's what's going on. She's viewing it, but she's not with us uh, to uh, comment. Uh, are you, is she on YouTube, or where is she viewing it from? Um, I, I assume she clicked the... She says she's watching it. Yes, yeah, she's assisting. Okay, because that's probably why uh, that, that can't. Uh, I can't see. You can only you can only type messages if you're on this. If you join here. Okay. Try doing that, okay? I'm not sure how to do that. Usually, I just uh, click like uh, when, on the link that I sent to people. You um, 
at least for me, I just click that link and then it brings me to the to the thing and then I just uh, I just say join the chat. I don't know. Uh, hopefully you can figure that out. How long has Josh been with us? Josh, it looks like he came on about five minutes ago. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to be trying to finish this, so let's see. But I, I want to do this here for at least 30 minutes. Is that o okay for you guys? Sure. For me, it's fine. Let's see here. Text unclear. Verse, uh, chapter 27, footnote E. Right here, the merciful will bless the Lord of glory, the eternal King, all the day. So, all right, so that's pretty much those footnotes here. Um, she's still having problems joining us? I'm not sure. Okay. While we're figuring that out, let's have someone read the next... The next thing, please. Uh, and we're going to try to... What do you want to read? Um, I want uh, someone to read the rest of 28 to 36, but can we... Uh, unless no one else wants to do it. I want to give someone else a chance to do it. Uh, Rob or Joshua, do either of you want to read those chapters? No, thank you. All right. Um... What about you, Josh? Do you want to read it, or do you want Sean to read? Can you hear me? Yep. Uh, I, I've got two different versions here, so I don't, I don't know which one you want me to use. Uh, which versions do you got? I have the Hallelujah Scriptures version, and, and what's I have the I have the Olive Talks Affair version. Okay, uh, just just pick which one that uh, you prefer, which one you like better. Both of those seem okay. I haven't checked them out myself, but and you, whichever one you want to do, that's cool. And read chapters twenty-eight to thirty-six. All right, I'll just go with uh, the Hallelujah Scripture one for now. All right. Because the, uh, the chapters and verses of the Sefer are a little different. Yeah. All right. All right. So you want 28 through 36? Yes, please. All right. And then I went towards the east into the midst of the mountain range of the desert. And I saw a wilderness, and it was solitary, full of trees and plants. And water gushed forth from above. Rushing like a plentiful water course towards the northwest will cause clouds and dew to ascend on every side. And then I went to another place in the desert and approached to the east of this mountain range. And I there saw aromatic trees exhaling the fragrance of frankincense and myrrh. And the trees also were similar to the almond tree. And beyond these, I went far to the east. And I saw another place, a valley of water, and therein there was a tree, the color of fragrant trees, such as the gum tree. And on the sides of those valleys I saw fragrant cinnamon, and beyond these I proceeded to the east. And I saw another, and I saw other mountains, and amongst them were groves of trees, and there sweet liquid flowed forth from them which is named Sarara and Gabanum. And beyond these mountains, I saw another mountain to the east of the ends of the earth, whereon were aloe trees, and all the trees were full of incense, being like almond trees. And when one burnt it, it smelled sweeter than any fragrant odor. And after these fragrant odors, as I looked towards the north over the mountains, I saw seven mountains full of choice nard and fragrant trees and cinnamon and pepper. And then I went over the summits of all these mountains, far towards the east of the earth, and passed above the eastern sea and went far from it and passed over the messenger, Zotiel. And I came to the garden of righteousness. 
and saw beyond those trees many large trees growing there and of pleasant fragrance, large, very pleasant, and great. And the tree of wisdom, of which they eat, and know great wisdom. That tree is in height like the fir, and its leaves are like the carob tree, and its fruit is like the clusters of the vine, very lovely. And the fragrance of the tree penetrates afar. Then I said, How lovely is the tree, and how good to look at it. Then Raphael, the Kodesh messenger, who was with me, answered me and said, This is the tree of wisdom, of which your elderly father and your aged mother, who were before you, have eaten. And they learned wisdom, and their eyes were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they were driven out of the garden. And from there I went to the ends of the earth, and saw there great... And saw there... Hold on real quick for me. Was she not okay. able to get it uh, to work, Sean? Uh, okay, um, you, you can continue. She couldn't get on. All right. So she's okay. watching. And from there, I went to the end of the earth and saw their great beasts, and each differed from the other, and birds also differing in appearance and form and voice, the one differing from the other. And to the east of those beasts I saw the ends of the earth, whereon the Shamaim rests, and the portals of the Shamaim open. And I saw how the stars of the Shamaim come forth, and I counted the portals out of which they proceed, and wrote down all their outlets, of each individual star by itself, according to their number and their names, their forces and their position, and their times and their months, as Uriel, the Kodesh messenger, who was with me, showed me. He showed all matters to me and wrote them down for me. Also, their names he wrote for me, and their laws and their beginnings. And from there, I went towards the north, to the ends of the earth, and there I saw a great and ma magnificent object at the ends of the whole earth. And there, oh, and here, the Uva of hosts, I saw three portals of the Shamaim open in the Shamaim. Through each of them proceed north wind. When they blow, there is cold, hell, frost, snow, dew, and rain. And out of one portal they blow for good. But when they blow through the other two portals, it is the violence and affliction on the earth, and they blow the violence. And from there I went towards the west to the ends of the earth, and saw there three portals of the Shamaim open such as I had seen in the east, the same number of portals, and in the same number of outlets. And from there I went to the south, to the ends of the earth, and saw there three open portals of the Shamaim. And then there came dew, rain, and wind. And from there I went to the east, to the ends of the Shamaim, and saw where the three eastern portals of the Shamaim opened, and small portals above them. Through each of these small portals pass the stars of the Shamaim, and run their course to the west on the path which is shown to them. And, and as often as I saw, I barak always Yahuwah of esteem. And I continued to Barak, or bless Yahuwah, of esteem, who was wrought great and magnificent wonders to show the greatness of his work to the messengers and to spirits and to men, that they might praise his work and all his creation, that they might seek the work of his might and praise the great work of his hands and Barak him or bless him forever. Okay, good. Thank you for reading that. Uh, do, do you guys have any insights of what we read? Uh, if you want, you can share, and then after you guys share, or if no one does, then I'll share what I have to say. Okay. Well, if there's anything you guys want to say that comes to you later on, please feel free to do so. Um, let me share the screen again.
All right. So, um, so let's see. We left off with twenty-eight. So. Right, and again, you know, these special brackets are, it's a quick reference to tell you that that's not in the Greek, what's in between here. That's not in the Greek. That's not in the Greek. That's not in the Greek. Now here, I hear it's in a, this tells us that R.H. Charles thinks that's not part of the original text. He thinks that was added. I disagree, but that's his opinion. When you see it bolded, that means R.H. Charles changed it. Uh, and that's not what the actual text says, but he just decided to change it. Parentheses is he added it for clarification. And this type of bracket right here, it's in the Greek, but not in the Ethiopian. Uh, so that, that was a little reminder of, of what that means. Uh, let, let's see here. Also, I just find it interesting that he, he tells us about the trees and the plants. It's just kind of interesting because... Um, he finds it important to tell us about this stuff. In the beginning of the Book of Enoch, he's telling us about the 14 trees which don't, which don't lose their leaves in winter. So he, it, it, scripture often finds the trees and the plants of importance and value to, to, to teach us. And I think it's uh, he, we can we can learn from what Enoch tells us about these plants of their value and their blessing that he gave, that our creator gave to us. And he's also giving us, he's basically telling us about the, the places that he saw, the geography, and so he's saying how each mountain has certain blessings. So he's kind of like giving us, telling us ahead of time that these are blessings for the righteous to come. Now let's see here. Wilderness... Um so, verse 1, towards, thence I went into the midst of the desert, that's what the Greek says, the Ethiopian adds those clauses, um, R.H. Charles claims that the, the Aramaic original was seeds, um, so right here, plants, full of trees and plants, apparently, um, the uh, he R. H. Charles thinks the original is plants, but the actual text of the Greek, the Greek and the Ethiopian both say seeds, so it should say full of trees and seeds, not plants. Um, and what? Also, see right here and is removed from the Ethiopian. It's not in there. So Ethiopian just says full of seed trees or something like that. Seed trees. Seedy trees or something. Um, then we also have cloud... Wait. Okay, caused all the way to, to ascend, which is um, what the Greek says. Where is that? Um, caused clouds and dew to ascend. He says, the Ethiopian, if you amend it by changing vowel points, because the Ethiopian text has vowel points, if you change the vowel points, you can make the Ethiopian text say what the Greek text says. So that's what R. H. Charles did. Then... Clouds. Greek and Ethiopian read water, not clouds. See, Greek reads uder, which is water, and that's that's a water's like mayim in Hebrew. It's mayim in Aramaic. Um, so right here, where is it? Uh, it caused clouds and dew to ascend on every side. I don't see why he said clouds. It makes no sense. Water makes sense. So, well, well if I could inject something there. Oh, no. um, he may be speaking about fog, 
uh, that that could be interpreted as clouds, but all three of them are water. A cloud is made of water, so it's just a, a, tra a translation choice, I think. Well, R. H. Charles tells us what he does. He tells us whenever he bl he bolds something, he tells us that that's him actually changing the text to try to correct it to what he thinks it actually said in the right. original. So what R. H. Charles is trying to say is he believes the original Aramaic. Can you see this right here, or is it hard to see? Yeah, we can see it. Um, Onanim, which is which is Hebrew or Aramaic, Hebrew and Aramaic for clouds. Mayin is Aramaic for waters. Uh, Hebrew is Mayim. Uh, so he claims, or Charles believes, that the original said Onanin and that it got changed and mistranslated as Mayin. But I don't really see any evidence for that. But as Sean said, they both are similar in idea. So it's not too much of a false rendering. Um, he went to a place in the desert. Let's see, aromatic trees, and what does that say right here? A corruption in the Aramaic, leading to a false rendering of judgment. So apparently, the text says. Uh, I'm not sure if he's saying I saw trees of judgment or something. I don't know if that's what he's saying. Um, the Greek says exhaling, exhaling. Uh, Ethiopian says, I don't know what this word is, pleon. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Almond tree is in the Greek. Ethiopian does not have almond tree, but it says right here, after pleon uh, in line before, it has kuasculus, question mark. He doesn't know it. He's not sure what that is. And then he says possibly corresponding to the Greek karuais. Um, let's see verse 1 of 30 that's and beyond oh yeah. hold on what was it water like that which fails not like that which fails not okay so actually the Ethiopian has a special thing that's not in this text that's not in his translation. It says, I saw another place, a valley of water, like that which fails not. So that's interesting. On the extra detail there. Let's see. Um... To, right here, to the east of the ends of the earth, that's in the Greek, it's not in the Ethiopian. That's why it's in the special bracket. Where on were aloe trees, that's in the Ethiopian, that's not in the, the, uh, the Greek. So it's possible that it either should be this or this, not both. I'm not sure, though. All, trees were, all the trees were full of stacked. Right here, he says... He he changed it. What what does your guys say for stacked? In uh, chapter thirty one, uh, verse three, or verse two, all the trees were full of what? What does he say there? Being like almond trees, full of stacked. This is fir tree, brother. Good. It says stacked in your guys. Yeah. He, what he about says, What? How about Josh's version of the Hallelujah? What does that say? Uh, trees of judgment in the Sefer. Um, okay, Kay's with us. Good. Uh, good to have uh, you here. Um, so basically, okay, so of stacked. That is. Um, let me see. Where was it? Of the judgment one, right? That's Aramaic. That that's uh, aromatic. That's in chapter twenty nine of judgment. But we're looking for of stacked in chapter thirty one. Uh, 
being like almond trees. And basically, we, this is bolded, as you can see. It's bolded, which means that R.H. Charles changed it. So if your translation says stack, that means you have a altered text. And what the Greek text actually says is ex uh, outus. I don't know what that means. And then Ethiopian says stereos. That's the Greek uh, presumed form behind the Ethiopian translation. Uh, so stacked is not the correct translation. He changed that, and it should not be there. I've and never then, heard or, what? I've never even heard of that word stacked before. It's just like a type of plant or something, I think, or some type of, you know, um, it's one of the spices Jeez. or something. Uh. Burnt is what the Greek text says. The Ethiopian says something else. Um, wait. It says G in G in turn follows a misreading. Translates it as pound or something. Um, let's see. Smelt sweeter, and then Ethiopian says was better. So you can see there are some interesting differences there. Uh, now I want to talk for a second about the content of this. Is first we met once again we see the seven mountains which we saw before seven mountains and then there's the angel Zotio that might be one of the archangel the seven archangels um, but now we it's showing us the geography of where the Garden of Eden is and this garden Jubilees the Book of Jubilees also gives us geography details as well of where the Garden of Eden is. So we can kind of use Enoch and Jubilees to figure out where the Garden is. It's kind of cool information there. And then um, it's it says this is clearly the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It says beyond those trees many large trees growing there and of goodly fragrance large very beautiful and glorious in the tree of wisdom whereof they eat and know great wisdom uh, and then the Greek apparently says two trees um, and a tree of knowledge which uh, whose holy fruit holy fruit they eat and know great wisdom so the tree of knowledge of good and evil was holy fruit and it's great wisdom so it kind of like a lot of people almost when they read what Genesis says they read it like as if it was like a horrible fruit like it's cursed fruit but it's not cursed fruit it's holy we need to understand it was holy but just like according to the law of Moses not everyone is allowed to touch the holy things if you touch the Ark of the Covenant you deserve to die if unless you're uh, you, you're not supposed to touch it at all uh, in the same way you know you're not, Regular people were not supposed to touch it unless given permission, uh, the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And that's what Adam and Eve did, unfortunately. This right here is not in Ethiopian, but it is in the Greek. The, that tree is in height like the fir, and its leaves are like <laughs> the carrot tree. Fruit, the fruit of it is like the clusters of a vine. Some apocrypha texts say that it was the vine that... Uh, was the fruit of what they ate from. It says, the fragrance of the tree pen penetrates afar. Then Enoch is talking, he tells of how attractive it is its look. So even Enoch acknowledges, wow, that's very attractive. You can understand, okay, why would they, why would they uh, risk everything they had for that fruit? Because there was other fruit in the, in the garden, and they could eat from the tree of life, and all these other fruit trees. They had everything else. Why couldn't they just obey and, and not take it what what was such a big deal like why did they care about this why did they feel a need to to give in and eat of this forbidden fruit but what we see here a little insight into that is because it was extremely attractive uh, in appearance it was so aesthetically pleasing it looked very desirable and delicious to eat it's like with some people when they see a, a commercial on TV and they see pizza they're like, oh, I just need that pizza, you know. You, you, you see people like that. It's kind of a similar thing, uh, but this was, like, way uh, more intense than that, you know. 
Yeah. I have an interesting context about the Christmas tree regarding that subject. I think that the Christmas tree is actually sort of a replica replica of that original tree that was supposed to be so enticing in the garden that misled mankind. Well, the tree, uh, the tree of knowledge? Yes. Mm, it's an interesting idea. I never heard of that idea before. Did yeah, you come up with like, that or did you hear it from other people? No, I just came up with that. It's kind of okay. like Satan's trophy. Gotcha. And it's got these balls all over it, like enticing fruit, you know, and then at the top of it it has the Pentagon, a uh, five-pointed star, which is basically a, a symbol of Satan dominating mm -hmm. the tree. Hmm. Interesting, huh? Yeah. <coughs> you have to... <coughs> it goes a little bit off topic, but that's interesting. Uh, you, you should talk with me sometime about that on Facebook. I'd be interested to hear more about it, you know? The tree, okay. was, the tree was enticing, but the adversary was there to market it, too. Right, yeah. yeah. That exactly. always helps. That's kind of what happens with uh, with other sins too. It's like you yeah, always there somewhere. You know, the, these sins are are very tempting of themselves, and then to add to that, we've got the enemy trying to overpower us and bring us to these sins. And now we've got Raphael talking, and he explains to him. Now, look, this is really cool because this helps us figure out some things. It tells us the Septuagint is wrong. This proves that the Septuagint is in error in Genesis in the genealogy because it says right here, this is the tree of wisdom of which thy father old and thy aged mother who were before thee have eaten. Basically it's saying your your parent, your Adam and Eve are old but they're still alive. So right now when Enoch is having this vision they're still alive, and that actually agrees with the Samaritan version of Torah and the Book of Jubilees. Possibly it agrees with Masoretic text, but I, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, it probably does with the Masoretic, yeah. Uh, but so this just kind of gives the extra details here. Cor it confirms the Genesis story. They knew that they were naked and they were driven out of the garden. Um, so it's clear what the angel is saying here. Let's see. Verse, what is that? Oh, yeah. According to Arch Charles, this was removed by accident by the scribes, by something called homitolution or something along those lines. I don't know how the, you pronounce it. I forget, but... Right here, see, HMT. Ethiopian omits those, that clause accidentally through HMT. Humitlion or something. Um, let's see. Verse 4. And the fragrance of the tree penetrates afar. Are we still talking about the tree of... Of uh, knowledge should get a bad. Yeah. Yes, that's still the. Uh, that's what's out of attractive smell too. Yep. It was entirely enticing. It seems like. Um. Let's see. Okay. It says the Greek text breaks off with thy father ate. Apparently there's no more after that for the Greek text. It, it, the fragment ends there or something. And said in the Ethiopian, it's not in the Greek. So that's, uh, where's that? And said right here. So the Greek just says, answered me, this is the treat, but in the Ethiopian it says answered me and said. It's, so it seems like the scribes sometimes omitted some of these extra details because it's repetitive. And they said, oh, we don't need that. It's basically saying the same thing, so they remove it. We see that all throughout Scripture, I, I find. We talked earlier about how these chapters kind of correspond with later on what we kind of, that tangent we went on earlier, that long tangent uh, from chapters 76 and 77. This corresponds very well to that. 
and chapters basically it's chapter 72 to 76 it corresponds where so but first it's interesting because he's being shown the animals so that's kind of really it doesn't tell us what he was shown about the animals but Enoch felt it needed to tell us that he was shown the animals and then after being shown the animals he was also shown the portals and the, the stars um, and this is basically a a summary of what we find in chapters 72 through 76 uh, where he writes it down. It says Uriel showed him all these things and Enoch wrote it down but the angel also wrote it down for him. He, the angel Uriel or Serial wrote down the laws and Enoch also wrote down these laws. Um, Hold on. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, and as I mentioned earlier, I, f I believe these chapters support my interpretation that it's not talking about the the uh, it's not talking about the seasons, but it's talking about the the direction of the wind to to determine. Uh, to, de to determine whether you're going to have a good weather or not, it's kind of like you know how there's the uh, there's compasses, right? So there's a compass. Enoch gives us the uh, he gives us a sundial. Okay, he gives us a sundial. He gives us a compass, and he gives us a wind. Uh, what are those? You know, the, the wind uh, main uh, lines or something. I forget the exact term for them. Um, but just like those wind uh, instruments, which you, you set it up, and it tells you what direction the wind is coming from, that's the same thing Enoch's telling us right here. He's telling us the direction the wind comes from is an indication whether it's going to be good weather or bad weather. And he tells us right here, he went towards the north to the ends of the earth. He was in the northern section of the world, and he saw there a great and glorious device at the ends of the whole earth. He saw three portals of heaven open in the heaven. This is the horizon line that he's looking at. It says, through each of them proceed north winds. So there's winds coming from the north. When they blow, the north winds blow because they're coming from the north pole. There is cold, hail, frost, snow, dew, and rain. But out of one portal, they, as we learn later on, it's the middle portal. Out of the middle portal of the north, they blow for good in from the north. But when they blow through the other two portals on each of the sides, it is with violence and affliction on the earth. And they blow with violence. And basically, Enoch's telling us that it's punishment for sin. When we sin, uh, there's there's punishment uh, from from harsh weather. Mm -hmm. So you if you want to figure out for yourself the weather, you just follow Enoch's instructions and you see which direction the wind is coming from. So if you're by yourself and and some people are warning about possible hurricane season and you see the, the winds are coming from a bad angle, according to Enoch, that's a, that's a warning sign that you need to be aware that something bad is probably going to happen. But if it's coming from, the, from one of the uh, prosperous lines of direction, then that's a good thing and it's not going to be bad. So we can use this. It's very practical for us, uh, I believe, if, that, if, that, if my interpretation is correct, and I believe it is. Um, so yeah, this ends this section right here. Some footnotes. Um, some of the Ethiopian manuscripts read functions instead of companies. Uh, some manuscripts say device, others say wonder. North winds, as we read earlier, some man one manuscript says winds through the north. It's the same thing, just worded differently. 35, the east. R. H. Charles claims it should say the north, but we should not listen to what R. H. Charles is saying. I don't think he. I think most of the time R. H. Charles is wrong. Um, and then. 36. One, 
I went to the south and saw there three open portals, and thence there come dew, rain, and wind. R. S. Charles marks that as corrupt. That's what those crosses mean. It means he thinks it's corrupt. That's a bad reading. Um, right here. Oh, and uh, so manuscripts right here. Come, some manuscripts say the south wind. And this one says from the south. So right here. And from thence I went to the south. I saw, and thence there come from the south, or the south wind. Um, let's see. Two spirits and two men. That's verse 4. Glorious wonders to show the greatness of his work to the angels and to spirits and to men. It says right here in other manuscripts, it says, to the spirits of men. So that's a very different reading there. And then the work of his might, the might of his work. It's basically the same thing. Um, and then one other, we'll check this to see if there's any important readings. Oh, wait. Aromatic. Let's see what he says. And there I saw the tree of judgment, the smell of rubbish. Its tree looked like that of frankincense and myrrh. And beyond it, beyond those above the easterly mountains, it is not far. And I saw a place which is a valley of water that is endless. And I saw a beautiful tree which resembles a tree whose fragrance is like that of mastic. Okay. Um, called Sarara and Galbanum, and they were aloe trees, whole forest. The whole forest was full of like sturdy almond trees. Remember, it, they tr he tr he corrected it to say stacked, but according to the Ethiopic text, it actually says the whole forest. That's a very different reading. Um, okay, now let's see. Yeah, see right here? Hard almond trees. Charles amends this sentence to read, all the trees were full of stacked, being like almond trees. And then right here, line, uh, sec H, it pleases above all order odors. That's H, where is that? Um, Uh, right here. And when one picks the fruit, it gives the most pleasant odor. Or it's Charles changed it to say, when one burnt it, it smelt sweeter than any fragrant odor. So he changed it. All right, Charles is guilty of changing the text and not, uh, uh, basically, in the translations you guys have that copies Charles' version, you don't have the footnotes. So you don't see this stuff, which right. is a problem. Because sometimes his changes are wrong, and you yeah. guys don't realize that. You, can, can you have you, no way of knowing. Can you go back to uh, chapter 29? There's only two verses in Robert R. Child's version um, right there. See, I don't have nothing like smells like rubbish. That's not in my version. And there I saw the tree of judgment, the smell of rubbish. Let's see here. Yeah, and then it compares rubbish to frankincense and myrrh. Let's see. And there I saw... Its tree looked like that of frankincense and myrrh. I find that strange. Um, and this uh, is. I mean, th th those are two of the most used uh, fragrances in um, Judaism uh, in worship. According to them, it was used in temple offerings, and right. this this compares it to a, uh, something bad. A, let's see A. 
This, reden this rendition of the Ethiopian, following A closely, may be wrong. The text is awkward. Charles, following Beer and Praetorius, and partially in accordance with the Greek, has suggested the emendation of the text to read, I saw aromatic trees exhaling the fragrance of frankincense and myrrh, and the trees also were similar to the almond tree. Or maybe that's a different... Maybe G right here is Ethiopian G. Uh, Entirely different. Go back up and, and read, and let me take a look at that, please, right there. Tree of Judgment, the smell of rubbish. Um, yeah, so there's some... Tree of Judgment is missing, and also the smell of rubbish is missing. Well, it's not missing. It's, it's a different translation. It's, or it's, a, it's, a, it's a different words in place of each other. So that whole thing is missing right there in mine. The yours, only thing I have is, yeah. Yours is the same thing, except it has different words there. So it's right here. And there I saw arom aromatic trees. That corresponds with tree of judgment. Okay. Uh, then uh, exhaling the fragrance. Exhaling the fragrance. The other... One says the smell of rubbish. So of rubbish is corresponds with exhaling. Uh, as as um, R. H. Charles says, exhaling from the Greek. Ethiopian says, pleon, not exhaling. This is exhaling, and this apparently is rubbish or something. So it's a different word that's in the place of it. That's the reason why it reads so differently. Um, let me see. All right, and then oh yeah, uh, we already went through that. Um, so now we just check to see if there's any final important variants here, and we're going to be about to end this uh, teaching, but let me see. Let's see here. O, let's see. O for 32. And I said... One manuscript says burning. Instead of, I said that's strange. So sometimes the the manuscripts have errors, you know. Um, and that could have a lot to do, you know, when they were passed down the scrolls. The scrolls could have been damaged, smudged, smeared, whatever, and they did the best they could back then because Enoch is super old, and when it was passed down hands, you know. They use materials like pounded out papyrus and no telling what else. But I'm sure it was a really tough job when these things got old to to write it down again without making uh, some sort of um, confusion errors. Right. Well, what helps is there's a lot of manuscripts of Ethiopian, so we can compare the differences. Um, you know. So let's see. Well, by the time the Ethiopians came around, this was already a, an ancient document. It goes yeah, all right. way back to the Enoch's days. I mean, that that document went through the Ark of Noah yeah. and passed down to Abraham uh, in Babylon, and Abraham gave it to most likely ended up in the hands of the Egyptians who went to um uh, the Israelites who went to Egypt, and then it got into the hands of Moses, and then finally got its way over to the Ethiopians, no telling how long, possibly well, even the basically, death. according to Second Ezra, all the scriptures were restored by Ezra, so we can date the scriptures reliably, a, a reliable copy to the 5th century B.C., or 6th century B.C. Uh, uh, so that would include Enoch. And so that has a much less time. So Enoch was translated into Aramaic in the early centuries B.C. 
And then probably around the first century, it was translated into Greek. And around that time, a little bit later, in the early centuries AD, it was probably translated into Latin as well. Then, later on, something like 5th century AD, or even later, maybe closer to the 10th century, eventually it was translated into uh, Ethiopian from the Greek. Uh, and it's also possible some of the writings of the Apocrypha were translated for, from, for Ethiopian. It was Greek, translated into Egyptian, oh, Coptic, that is, translated into Arabic, Arabic translated into Ethiopian. So there is a huge separation of languages sometimes. Um, but it's, the, the, the Enoch text was probably translated from a good Greek copy, uh, and the Greek was probably uh, made sometime around the first century BC, roughly, I would guess. Let me see. Well, the Ethiopian version, I'm sure that got over to the Ethiopians way before the Greeks got a hold of their translations, because John is the one who supposedly went to visit Ethiopia, and most likely he left to that, this document, this copy in the Messiah's day, around 33 CE, or somewhere Possibly, in between. but there's um, the, the, uh, the Ethiopian... There, there's two times when the Ethiopians kind of accepted the Messiah. The first was in the, you know, the first century, but they didn't really fully accept him as like a whole nation until many centuries later. It was more like the fifth century or something. Um, let me see. So there is uh, one other thing I want to say before I read one final thing for you guys. Um... What was it? Let's see. Well, okay, well, I'll read this. It says, When I saw, I blessed, and I shall always bless the Lord of glory, who performed great and blessed miracles, in order that he may manifest his great deeds to his angels, the winds, and to the people so that they might praise the effect of all his creation, so that they might see the effect of his power and praise him in respect to the great work of his hands and bless him forever. He, he says, okay, manuscript B, to the souls of men. C says, to the souls and to the people. Winds, uh, sometimes, is the same word as spirits in Hebrew. Winds and spirits. So that's why it translates it winds here and spirits in the other one. It was where where was it that I wanted to show you guys? It was like right around here. Oh yeah, the beast thing. Uh, basically, this uh, I strongly encourage you guys to take into consideration the authenticity of Second Enoch. I believe that's actually scripture, but it's been corrupted much worse than. Book of Enoch. Um, but so Second Enoch corresponds a lot with what we see here. He's being shown the heavens. He's shown the, the geography, the different the stars, how they work, the sun, and uh, he's also shown animals too. And so I, I think that kind of corresponds here with what he's saying. But Second Enoch was not found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, was it? Right. Correct. Not in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Is it found in the Ethiopian Bible? No, it's not in Ethiopian as well. Hmm. It's in Slavonic. Okay. Um, but there's certain correspondences which suggest that Second Enoch is derived from an authentic original, far removed, but our copies are corrupt a lot, but there are certain features of it which are very authentic and match what Book of Enoch says. So I'm just going to... To conclude our study, to conclude our study, I'm going to read the Ar the Aramaic fragments from the Dead Sea Scrolls to you guys, and I'll give you a chance to say any final thoughts or questions. So right here, this is 4Q204. You see the bra any words in brackets is not found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. They reconstructed that. 
if it's not in the brackets, that's what was actually found in the fragment in the Dead Sea Scrolls. So column 12 of this particular fragment, it says, Beyond them I went away far. And then, Which there were sweet-smelling reeds, and then I, the aromatic cinnamon, and beyond valleys, then it goes to the next thing right here, uh, other and in those two, I saw trees from which issued, at the end of the Galbanum word, uh, beyond these mountains I was shown mountain. And then way over here, all the trees full of, which is comparable to the bark of the owl, and then the rest of the word, it doesn't finish. Uh, and then we go down here, fragrant aroma, when these barks are ground towards the northeast of them, I was shown mountains. And then it goes in the next column. Doors open. Their number. Then, from there I was conveyed to the south of the ends. And then here, for the south wind, for the dew and the rain. And then it continues here. I was shown three doors, and then of the heaven, and so it ends there for that fragment. Then we go to 4Q, uh, let's see, uh, where is it? 2.05. He showed me Mountains, the ground between. Okay. Uh, no, so 20, yes, 25 uh, in front of him. Who prepares these things? Center of earth, which there were trees from underneath. So this is like a chapter 25, 26, around right here. Uh, and then it. We see, then this and between them a deep ravine. And then we've got its, another mountain, and then between them and ravine. And then I was amazed at mountains, blessed completely. And then the, that was, that's fragment, that was fragment one, column two. And then there should be one or two more. 4Q206 says right here, one, this is from chapter 28, verse 3, it starts, one, which flowed towards the northeast, taking the water and the dew to ev Wait, hold on. Nope, sorry, That all of that is missing, okay? It's in brackets. Okay, so here, I went to place, to the east, location, gave off, and then right here we've got it full, and then in trees, then there's their bark is ground, it, then beyond these, towards the northeast of them, I was shown other mountains. Choice Nard Mastic Cardamom Pepper. From there I went on east of all the, those mountains, far from them, to the east of the land. Passed on the Red Sea, and I moved very far from it. I crossed over the darkness far from it and passed on the paradise of justice or righteousness. And then fragment four says, and I was shown from differing and, and then, your mother of old, and they learned that they were naked. And then the watchers. And he showed in accordance with times. And, then, and I was shown great works. And that's, I think that's it for the Dead Sea Scroll Fragments. Uh, of the section we read. Alright, 
yeah, I think that's it. So that's pretty much the full teaching for today. Are there any final thoughts or questions you guys would like to uh, bring before we end this?